Ma'am, we can't hear you. No. Am I audible now? Yes. Okay. So sorry. Uh, once again, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back. I hope everyone's had lunch. Uh, right now, we'll be proceeding towards the second half of the program, where we'll be having five technical parallel sessions going on. Uh, first is the Sorry, uh, we'd be having five parallel uh, sessions going on. So uh, the first session, a muscular skeletal and sports condition must stay in the same uh, session. The rest can proceed to their uh, breakout sessions. Uh, give us a minute as the breakout sessions are on process so that everyone can then get into their breakout sessions and start with the session. Thank you. Uh, you want us to go to the concern uh, breakout room? I am into community wellness program. Yes. Okay. Yes. Ma'am, I am an integrated category, so I have to join integrated category. Yes, you have yes. to join integra uh, integrated category. Yeah, ma'am. Thank you. Ma'am, how to join that? May I know? Uh, you would have an option uh, where you can see breakout rooms. Once you click that, you can see your breakout room and then you can join that. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. Got, got it. Thank you. Okay. No problem. I hope everyone's got their uh, breakout session room. Musculoskeletal and sports condition students, uh, the parallel session ones stay on this uh, very uh, breakout, I mean, very out session. The rest can get into the breakout sessions. Community wellness breakout sessions are there. Integrated category breakout session is there. Cerebrospinal disorder session is there. One is for the academics and one the students. So you can
give us a moment we'll start shortly Hello. Yes. Uh, Ma'am, few of my friends have the presentation today and they are waiting in the waiting room. Can you please add them? Okay. Thank you. No problem. For all those who have joined right now, uh, you can get into your breakout zones and uh, start with your presentations. Only musculoskeletal and sports condition students stay at this very session. The rest can join the breakout sessions. Musculoskeletal and sports condition students, uh, the panel can stay in this uh, very same page. <laughs> <laughs> 
and the others can get into their breakout zones. Ma'am, how should we uh, like go to the breakout? Like I am from the integrated integrated category. So how can I go into that? Uh, I hope you have the updated version of Zoom. Uh, there yes, ma'am. Yeah, there will be a breakout uh, room option. Okay. If you, yeah, if you click that, uh, you'd see all the breakout uh, rooms. You can just click on any of that and just join the one which you have to go, go into. I hope everyone's found their uh, breakout sessions. Anyone remaining? Can we start? Uh, yes, ma'am, we can. We just need to know if everyone's um, got into their breakout sessions. Because this breakout session is only, this main uh, session is only for the uh, muscul musculoskeletal and sports condition student panel. Academician, right? No, no, the academician one you'll have to uh, go to the breakout uh, room. So I have to go to the breakout yes. room. Yes, if you click the breakout room, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I understand. Yeah.
I hope everyone's got their breakout session. This breakout, this session is only for the musculoskeletal and sports condition panel. The others need to get into their breakout rooms. Good afternoon. Madam, this is uh, Dr. Basaraj Motimat here. Good afternoon, doctor. Yes. Madam, is this going to take uh, time? Like, can I join back later? Uh, sir, just two minutes. We'll just start. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you uh, for being patient. Uh, we'll begin now. Uh, so good afternoon once again uh, uh, to everyone. So we'll start with the session one of the technical uh, session, the musculoskeletal and sports condition. Today, the chairperson uh, is Dr. Baswaraj Motimat, Associate Professor, Kahir Institute of Physiotherapy, India. I would welcome you, sir. Uh, you could uh, say a few words and then we'll begin with the session. Thank you so much, Madam, for welcoming me. I'm uh, very pleased uh, and excited also at the same time to see the research work that has uh, been going around in different parts of the country. And then I wish all the best for this e-conference. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Uh, so we now begin with the, the first author. Uh, Kinjal Vipul Shah, who will present the paper Immediate Effect of Microfacial Release Using Lacrosse Ball versus Cycroball on Pain and Cervical Range of Motion in Chronic Trapezius, an experimental study. I apologize if I have uh, mispronounced something, if you can correct me. Over to you, Kinjal. Kinjal, are you there? Um, okay, uh, so the next person is Dr. Khushali Patel. Um, the paper she will be presenting is effect of long-term use of various footwear on navicular drop test in young adults, an observational study. Over to you, Dr. Khushali.
um, Dr. Kushali uh, is not here. We'll move on. Next is Riddhi Galia. Is she there, Riddhi? Yes, sir. Okay. So Riddhi will be presenting uh, the paper on effect of low level laser therapy at uh, 635 nm on chronic trapezitis, an experimental study. Over to you, Riddhi. Is my screen visible, ma'am? Yes, Rithi, it's visible. Okay, thank you. So, um, uh, my paper presentation is on effect of low-level laser therapy at 365 nanometer on chronic trapezitis, an experimental study. Introduction trapezitis is defined as inflammation of trapezius muscle. The upper trapezius muscle is designated as postural muscle and it is highly susceptible to overuse. It is caused by placing too much stress or strain over the trapezius muscle. Neck pain can be caused due to trapezitis. It occurs due to faulty posture during working, watching time and prolonged use of phone. Trigger points are discrete focal hyper irritable spots located in a taut band of skeletal muscle. They produce pain locally and in a referred and often accompanied with the chronicity, breakdown of trigger points helps in lengthen the muscle and hence reduce pain. Pain pressure threshold is elicited by using pressure ergometer and trigger point sensitivity is measured. NPRS was used to measure pain intensity. Universal goniometer was used to measure active contralateral section of the neck. The laser in a necromy for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. In this study, class 3A low intensity laser with 6 35 nanometer wavelength and 1 millimod, milliwatt power is used for the treatment. Methodology study design is experimental study, source of data, subjects of MDAR district, study duration 1 month, sample size 50 participants, and sampling method is simple random sampling. My, uh, selection criteria uh, both uh, adults and ma uh, male and female were included, age group of 18 to 30 years, subjects diagnosed, diagnosed with chronic trapezitis and having trapezitis for more than one year, subjects with trigger point and participants with Willing to participate were included in the study. The exclusion criteria for the study was history of cervical spine or uh, surgery or shoulder surgery, cervical spondylosis, spine tumor, whiplash injury or traumatic neck injury, radiating pain in upper extremity, fracture of cervical vertebra, cervical myelopathy, trapezitis is associated with any other pathology. The materials used were consent form, universal goniometer, digital uh, algometer, laser, pen, and paper. Procedure. Participants with trapezitis were screened for their eligibility depending on the inclusion and exclusion criteria. Written consent form were obtained from the participant. Participants were told about the nature of the study and study protocol. Participants were equally divided into experimental group A and uh, control group group B. Group A were given the low level laser therapy for 10 minutes per day for five times for a week and for three weeks plus conventional therapy and group B were given conventional therapy only which contains upper trapezius stretching exercises. The hold will be 20 seconds, three sets per day, active neck movements, uh, posture correction advices, hot pack for 10 minutes and all these conventional ex exercises are also given for the five times a week for three weeks. Uh, result, uh, statistical analysis of all data was for performed using IBM SPSS version 26 with level of significance 5%. All outcome measures were presented as mean plus or minus standard deviation using Wilcoxon and Man whitney uke test. Uh, P-value less than 0 0.005 indicates a significant difference. Uh, these are uh, the data. I compared the NPRS pre and post cervical lateral flexion range and uh, pain pressure threshold. The discussion, uh, the current study investigated the role of low level laser therapy at 635 nanometer in chronic trapezitis patients. The study aimed to evaluate 
calculate the effects of LLIT on patients with chronic hepatitis and to determine whether the uh, uh, low level laser therapy is capable of relieving pain and improving lateral neck flexion in presence of trigger points in trapezitis. The findings of this study showed that LLIT resulted in a significant improvement of NPRS active contralateral flexion range of motion in neck and pain uh, pressure threshold at the end of the study intervention. We obtained statistically significant improvements in comparison with the baseline values and scores of the pain and PRS, PPT and neck side section range. The conclusion is the results of our study suggest that LLIT provides benefit in the treatment of trapezitis. LLIT uh, reduces the pain and improves the neck range of motion in patients with trapezitis. The clinical application benefits of LLIT can improve pain relief and neck function after three weeks of treatment in patients with trapezitis. Limitations would be the sample size was uh, too small. The study period may have been too short to see the full benefits of LLIT on pain relief and neck function. We anticipate that there may be different results if the effects of LLIT are investigated over a longer duration, such as six months to one year post intervention. Future scope of the study in the future, the clinical benefits of different parameters or treatment time should be further explored. Further studies investigating the long term follow up effects of LLLT may contribute to a better understanding of this treatment modality. Financial support, no funding was taken for this study. Acknowledgement, we would like to thank all the participants for being part of this study. And these are my references. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Riddhi. Do we have any questions? Basavaraj, sir, do you want to add something? Ma'am, can no, I? No, no. No? Yeah. Yes, yes, please Two go questions ahead. from my side. No, no need. Ma'am, uh, I could not connect due to some technical issues. So, when can I present? Can I present now? Uh, yes, Kinjal, we'll give you the next slot. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, so if there's no questions, we'll move ahead. We'll move ahead with uh, Kinjal Vipul Shah. She will be presenting her paper on immediate effect of micro uh, fa facial release using lacrosse ball versus uh, sacro ball on pain and cervical range of motion in chronic trapezitis and experimental study. Over to you, Kinjal. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, my screen is vis visible? Yes, your screen is visible, Kinjal. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, all. My topic for presentation is uh, immediate effect of myofascial release using cryoball versus la lacrosse ball on pain and cervical range of motion in chronic trapezitis. Uh, as we know, trapezial, uh, trapezitis is a very common musculoskeletal condition seen nowadays. Uh, trapezitis is a, a, a muscle condition in which the trapezius muscle undergoes inflammation, uh, uh, which is presented with severe neck pain. Uh, Chronic trapezitis is termed when uh, the pain is present for three or more than three months and it occurs due to faulty posture during working or uh, prolonged use of phone. Uh, trigger point, uh, it is a hyper-irritable spot associated with taut band of, muscular skel uh, of skeletal muscle that is painful on compression, palpation or stretch and it uh, usually gives rise to typical referred pain pattern. Uh, for trapezitis, various physiotherapy protocols and uh, modalities have been administered like uh, protocols like rest, hot, uh, cold pack, heat pack, ultrasound, microwave diathermy, tense, spray and stretch, uh, myofascial release and post isometric relaxation. Uh, in myofascial release technique, it is a soft uh, tissue mobilization technique in which uh, it is the facilitation of uh, mechanical, neural, and psychological adapt adaptive potential and as a uh, interface via the uh, myofascial system. So in this study, uh, we have, uh, in this study, it is conducted to check the effect of myofascial and uh, myofascial release and cold application together on pain and range of motion in patients with chronic trapezitis. Uh, 
It is an experimental study with 38 participants and convenient sampling was used. The participants, uh, in participants, both male and female were included, uh, which were in the age group of 18 to 25 years and had positive jump sign and no history of cervical trauma. In exclusion criteria, uh, history of cervical spine injury, cervical trauma with fracture or dislocation, cervical pathology and trapezitis associated with cervical pathology. These were the materials used. The orange ball, uh, uh, the small one that is the lacrosse ball and the steel ball in the uh, socket is the uh, cryo ball. And the machine is tense along with the consent form. Procedure. Uh, when the participants were, uh, after screening for inclusion and exclusion criteria, the participants were informed about the purpose and method of the study. And along with that, an informed consent was taken. The demographic data was collected. And then the 38 participants were divided into two equal groups. Uh, in uh, group one, like uh, even number, the participants which fall in the even numbers were in the group one and odd numbers in the group two. The outcome measures used for pain was NPRS and range of motion was assessed by universal goniometer. Group A participants, MFR with cryo ball was given for two minutes and 30 seconds, uh, two minutes and 30 seconds rest period was given and three sessions were performed for this. And for group B participants, two minutes of lacrosse ball MFR release was given, um, uh, my official release was given with 30 seconds of rest interval. And uh, same as earlier, three sessions were performed. And PRS and range of motion were collected uh, after the MFR protocol. Uh, conventional treatment given was passive stretching with five second hold, static neck exercise with 10 second holds and five second rest, shoulder shrugs with five second hold and scapular retraction. Baseline treatment for both the groups, uh, times was given with frequency of 100 hertz, pulse duration of 250 microseconds for 20 minutes. This is the result. Uh, between the group analysis was performed by uh, Wilcox and, uh, sorry, Man Whitney U test between the cryo ball and lacrosse ball and the pre-post data was assessed by Wilcox and test. This is the result. Uh, so between the group, it was observed that uh, the NPRS p-value was 0 0.018, then uh, for lateral flexion 0 0.001 and for rotation 0 0.001. Discussion, uh, the study was primarily aimed to evaluate the efficacy of MFR with cryo ball and lacrosse ball in management of trigger points in trapezius muscle. When myofascial release is used on the uh, trigger point, the local chemistry changes uh, with which causes blanching of nodules followed by hyperemia. This flushes out the muscle inflammatory exudates and pain metabolites, which further breaks down the scar tissues, desensitizing, desensitizes the nerve ending and reduces the muscle tone. MFR and cold therapy have commonly been used individually in the management of trapezitis. Here the cryoball provides effect of both. So uh, in this study, uh, we find out the combined effect of both MFR and uh, cold application in pain and range of motion in chronic trapezitis since no study has been performed earlier. Conclusion, significant improvement is seen in range of motion and reduction in pain intensity is observed in the pre-test and post-test measures of both groups, but more improvement is seen in uh, the result of myofascial release with cryo ball compared to that with lacrosse ball. For limitations, a combined effect with exercise for long-term pain relief can be observed Further control study with longer observation are required to observe for long-term improvement in symptoms. Post-treatment follow. Uh, it can be carried out uh, for future scope. It can be carried out on larger population in different age groups. No funding was taken for this study. And uh, I would like to thank my guide or faculties, uh, friends and the participants who were part of this study to make it possible. These are my references. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Kinjal. Um, do we have any questions? No questions from my side. Okay, sir. Before we proceed to the next um, author, I would like to let the participants know that this uh, session is for the musculoskeletal and sports condition session only. The others have to join the breakout sessions that they are allotted.
if anyone is not from this session, please join your uh, breakout sessions. Uh, okay, so next, uh, do we have Dr. Khushali? Okay, um, going ahead, uh, Akshita Manjrekar, are you there? Yes. Okay. Uh, could you hear me clearly? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Um, so, Akshata Manjrekar will be uh, presenting on effect of body position on manual dex dexterity, grip strength, and pinch strength in physiotherapists. Over uh, to you. Good afternoon, everybody. The topic uh, which I will be presenting is the effect of body position on manual dexterity, grip strength, and pinch strength in physiotherapists. Uh, so, as we all know, uh, manual dexterity uh, means the ability to manipulate objects uh, with your hands and uh, ability to do uh, carry out certain minute actions and that hand is a very important uh, factor for every human being. Uh, besides this, one of the other hand functions which is important uh, in our daily lives is pinch strength and grip strength. Uh, speaking of, uh, of which all such uh, hand uh, functions are very essential in physiotherapists. Uh, as you know, physiotherapists uh, are uh, the people who require a lot of hand skills because they are going to use it for assessment as well as therapy. Because uh, as you know that uh, the various skills for treatment which we require like dry needling or even assessment uh, require minute hand functions and grip and pin strength. Uh, so it is one of the very necessary components in a physiotherapist. Besides this, uh, we'll also notice that uh, in our daily day-to-day uh, -day, uh, working, physiotherapists are going to uh, uh, adopt many uh, body positions for treating as well as assessment purpose. Uh, so uh, some of the positions which are commonly adopted are uh, standing erect, walk, uh, walk standing, stride standing, standing forward bent posture, in a forward bent posture, which is uh, it, uh, within 45 to 90 degrees of forward bending, sitting erect, kneeling, as well as squatting. So as you can see, uh, there has been paucity of literature uh, on, um, uh, uh, on the uh, relationship between uh, the uh, hand dexterity, grip strength, and pin strength, and its relationship with body position, in particularly physiotherapists. And that is the reason we have undertaken this study. The aim and objectives of my study are that to determine the effect of body positions on manual dexterity, grip strength, pinch, pinch grip, using polio pegboard test, the Jamar dynamometer, and pinch gauze in physiotherapists. The methodology, the study type is a cross-sectional study, study design is observational study. The source of data is a uh, tertiary care hospital and physiotherapy practitioners in Belgavi city. Uh, target population is physiotherapists. The duration of the study was six months and the sample size was uh, uh, the sample design was non-probability sampling and the sample uh, sampling technique was convenient sampling. Uh, the inclusion criteria, as you can see, is that male or female physiotherapists who have had minimum of one year of experience and were in between the age of 23 to 40 and had willingness to participate in the study were included in this study. The exclusion criteria was that uh, any individuals having upper limb or lower limb fractures in last six months or had any diagno uh, diagnosed musculoskeletal or neurological disorders or any physiotherapist having uncorrected visual impairment. The outcome measures which were used uh, were Purdue pegboard test, Jamar dynamometer and pins gauze. Uh, so the procedure, uh, the subjects were selected as per the inclusion and exclusion criteria and written informed consent was obtained from them. The participants' demographic data was taken and manual dexterity, grip strength, and pin strength was measured. Uh, so each participant was instructed to maintain each position for 60 seconds, uh, which is considered as warm-up, following which the sub uh, subjects were asked to do the test. In this, uh, for Purdue pegboard test, which tests uh, the manual dexterity, the person was first asked to uh, put the uh, pins in the Purdue pegboard, but first by a right hand in 30 seconds, uh, then the amount of pins which were uh, put uh, were uh, given points and they were noted, followed by the left hand and then again uh, by both the hands. Then for grip strength, Jamar dynamometer was used uh, uh, in the uh, above mentioned postures and then a pinch grip, tripod grip and a tip to tip, uh, tip to tip pinches 
tripod pinches and lateral pinches were also measured. Uh, a 15 second uh, intertrial rest was also given in between to avoid the fatigue. Then uh, the test was performed in each position, like I mentioned before, walk in walk standing, stride standing, standing waist bent, uh, forward waist bent position, and in sitting erect position. So the test was entered into a spreadsheet and analyzed using SPSS version uh, 26, and mean and standard deviation was calculated for data obtained in each position. Uh, so, uh, as you can see in the first table, multiple comparison of hand grip strength was uh, done. Uh, the Bonferroni test was used for multiple comparison of hand grip strength in right hand. Sitting position was seen uh, uh, to be better. As you can see, the p-value is less than 0 0.05 for hand grip strength on the right side, followed by side stranding. Then multiple comparison of lateral pinch was done. Uh, wherein you can see uh, there is a significant, uh, bo uh, again, Bonfreni test was used for multiple comparison of lateral pinch for right and left hand. Uh, since the mean lateral pinch, sit, uh, uh, pinch for sitting was higher than walk standing, forward bending and stride standing position, sitting position uh, can be considered uh, as better for lateral pinch for the right side. For the left uh, side, the mean difference of lateral pinch between the positions, uh, uh, walk standing and stride standing was 1.26. The mean lateral uh, pinch for left for walk standing was slightly higher than stride standing and hence walk standing was considered better for the lateral pinch of the left uh, upper arm. Then multiple comparison of hand dexterity was uh, again uh, seen and analyzed. Bonfreni test was again used uh, for multiple comparison of hand dexterity for left and right. Uh, since mean hand dexterity of stride standing was higher than in sitting position and any other position, stand, uh, the stride standing position uh, for uh, right hand dexterity uh, was considered best followed by sitting position. Discussion. Uh, in our study, uh, as we could see, uh, uh, there, uh, it showed that for grip strength, sitting position was better. This result uh, was uh, did not uh, uh, was in contrast be done by uh, Wall M et al, which suggested that standing position had a better grip strength than sitting position. This could be because our study compared stride standing, walk standing, forward bending, and sitting, while the other study compared erect uh, standing with sitting. Sitting posture gives more body support and thus uh, helps in generating more force for gripping, which might be the reason for sitting showing better results. Uh, a study done by uh, Katel, uh, Kav, uh, Katovic et al. measured the pinch strength of dentists in standing and sitting, which showed that standing was uh, uh, with hand supported showed better results on pinch strength. This was not in line with uh, our, the results of a study which showed that lateral pinch on right side showed better results in sitting position, while on left side it showed better results in walk standing position. Our study showed that for hand dexterity, uh, sitting and stride standing position was better. This is, uh, this is again in line with uh, the pre a previously done study done by Charles uh, Buffington and Sonia Talreja on anesthesia and on respectively, which showed that manual dexterity was better in sitting position. Conclusion, our study concludes that body position has an effect on hand dexterity, grip strength, and lateral uh, pinch strength, and should be kept in mind while evaluating uh, and treating patients. Future scope. For future studies, other populations can also be assessed for uh, effect of body position on manual dexterity, grip strength, and pin strength. And additional, additionally, positions like kneeling and erect standing can also be compared uh, with the above positions for physiotherapists, as these are also some positions used, although lesser than the ones included in this study. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Akshata. Do we have any questions? No questions. Uh, moving ahead, next up is Apurva Nal. Hello, ma'am. Hi, Apurva. Uh, can you hear me, ma'am? Yes. Uh, ma'am, actually, I couldn't join from my laptop, so this is Pratiksha Rahani's laptop. So, can I present from this? Uh... Yes. Uh, it's yes, yes, sure. Yes, ma'am. Is it visible, ma'am? Yes, it's visible. Uh, could you put it on the slideshow? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, should I start? Yes, you can start. 
So the title of my study is comparing the effect of rhythmic stabilization and combination of isotonic technique on grip strength, pin strength, and dexterity of hand among middle-aged healthy individuals. A randomized clinical trial. So as we know, about 60% of the uh, population in India is of adult population, on which about 50% of population is dependent. So what important here is uh, the uh, normal population's grip strength, which we mainly don't focus on. So as the age increases, about three to eight percent of uh, the body mass declines as the age increases. So it is important to focus on that. So uh, there are various PNF techniques like rhythmic stabilization and combination of isotonic, but these are done uh, for uh, proximal muscles uh, like knee and uh, hip or shoulder joint. But it is not uh, mainly seen on the finger, so uh, we thought of concentrating uh, these uh, PNF exercises on fingers. Uh, so coming to the methodology, the study design was experimental. Uh, study type was randomized clinical trial. Duration of the study was six months. Uh, sampling technique was the chit method, random sampling, and sample size was about 40. So the inclusion criteria of my study was about middle age population, which ranged from 36 to 55 years. Both genders were considered, and the population was normal and healthy. As uh, this study, uh, the intervention was new. That is why I have to take a normal uh, healthy individuals. And the subject who had a better cognition, uh, they were included. The excluded part was if the dominant had uh, hand had any illness or any fracture, they were excluded. So coming to the procedure, about 64 uh, population uh, was screened, among which 14 were excluded, and about 40, the remaining one, were randomized into two groups. Uh, coming to group A, in which uh, rhythmic stabilization was given, which is a PNF technique, and in group B, combination of isotonic technique was provided. So uh, while the procedure was going on, uh, I had two laws to follow up in group A and one loss to follow up in group B. So total, uh, about 38 were analyzed. Sorry, 37 were analyzed. So in group A, rhythmic stabilization was given. Duration for both the groups were equal. That was about four weeks. And uh, in rhythmic stabilization, the patient had to sit on the chair and finger were held by a therapist. And they were asked to perform isometric exercises, front and back, about six seconds on each side. Coming to combination of isotonic, repetition was about 10 seconds. And the uh, patient had to flex the finger for four seconds, maintain it for two seconds, and then an eccentric contraction about four seconds. So uh, as we can see in the results, the baseline parameters were uh, normally distributed, uh, comparing the demographic data as well as the outcome measures. Here we can see that in group A, which was rhythmic stabilization, in dexterity, grip strength, as well as the finger strength, uh, everywhere the improvement was seen, the p-value is less than 0 0.05, whereas comparing to group B, which was combination of isotonic, the improvement was only seen in uh, dexterity. Uh, so why did this happen? The reason for it might be the rhythmic stabilization, it works on uh, Sherrington law, which states that if you try to uh, give isometric exercises to the agonist, the antagonist will also get strengthened. So there's a great correlation between strength and dexterity. So as there was increase in the grip strength and finger strength, the dexterity also showed improvement. When we come to second group, only dexterity was improved. The reason it might be there was no improvement, statistical improvement seen in the strength, but uh, the dexterity was improved because the clinical strength was improved of the population. So the limitation of our study was the occupation of the population was not considered which is uh, really important. And the population was scattered all over the Belgaum city. So it, uh, the traveling was the limitation. And uh, conclusion uh, here is that we should uh, mainly provide static PNF exercises more than the uh, dynamic PNF exercises to improve uh, to see improvement in dexterity, grip strength, and pain strength. So future scope our, our study was, uh, as in normal population, we have seen improvement in grip strength, pain strength, and dexterity. It can be also used in uh, athletes as well as patients with neurological condition. These are my references. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Apurva. Do we have any questions? No questions. Okay, sir. Moving on. Uh, next is Chanchal Shiv Shankar Bujbel. Chanchal, are you there? Sorry, Chanchala. Chanchala. 
okay uh moving ahead next is hardik a ramani hardik you can start presenting good afternoon everyone uh, my paper presentation topic is sports related concussion knowledge among physiotherapists across sectional survey introduction sports related concussions have been classified as a subtype of mild traumatic brain injury concussions occur from an external force or blow to the head or body that causes an alteration in neurologic functioning with impairment in concentration working memory and executive functioning biomechanical forces transmitted to the brain induce physiologic dysfunction and neurologic impairments generally in the absence of detectable macrostructural damage the initial diagnosis and management is often instituted on the field of play by team physiotherapist after concussion an athlete should only return to sports with the approval and under the supervision of their physiotherapist <laughs> need of the study to evaluate and quantify the knowledge regarding sports concussion among physiotherapists aims and objective aim to study knowledge of physiotherapists towards sports related concussion objective to assess the knowledge of physiotherapists towards sports related concussion by filling the self reported questionnaire methodology study design was a cross sectional study study setting was an online google form questionnaire sample population were physiotherapists sampling method was convenient sampling and sample size was 170 <clears throat> inclusion criteria subjects willing to participate in the survey participants allocated in the study were physiotherapists males and females both were included exclusion criteria physiotherapists who are not practicing outcome measure concussion knowledge questionnaire concussion knowledge questionnaire is a self reporting questionnaire instrument measuring knowledge of concussion the questionnaire consisted of 11 multiple choice questions <laughs> which was designed to assess concussion knowledge such as mechanism of concussion signs and symptoms of concussion and return to play guidelines we calculated the concussion knowledge score as the sum of questions 1 to 11 where each correct answer was given a value of 1 and all others 0 the interpretation is a uh, score between 0 to 4 means low low knowledge score between 5 to 8 means medium knowledge and score between 9 to 11 means high knowledge this is the concussion knowledge questionnaire procedure a questionnaire was used and google form was prepared which include consent of the participant demographic details and concussion knowledge questionnaire online platforms like whatsapp instagram and mail ids were used for the survey responses were collected and excel spreadsheet was prepared for proper data analysis uh, 119 were given the positive consent whereas 5 were given the negative consent for the survey uh, out of 119 Hundred and seventeen were matched the eligibility criteria, and two were excluded. And hundred and seventeen were <coughs> further analyzed. Uh, statistical analysis: the data collected from various social media platforms and Excel, Excel spreadsheet was prepared, and data analysis was done. Results: from total participants, sixty-eight percent were female, whereas thirty-two percent were male. <laughs> Area show in blue. shows the male participants and area in orange shows female participants after collecting data and undergoing suitable analysis 36% physiotherapists are well aware and possess good knowledge regarding sports related concussion whereas 52% have moderate knowledge about <coughs> concussion whereas 29% physiotherapists are aware of sports related concussion but not not well aware regarding assessment management and prevention of sports related concussion this graph shows the same the 36% are well aware regarding the sports related concussion and majority that is 50 52% have moderate knowledge about sports related concussion discussion the aim of the study was to find the level of knowledge and the practices of sports related concussion in athletes among the physiotherapists a study conducted by jenny et al concussion knowledge in high school football players concluded that they did not have appropriate knowledge of the symptoms and consequences of concussion study done by marin et al <coughs> sports concussion knowledge in uk general public suggested that knowledge regarding sports concussion in general public was limited miranda et al studied 
concussion knowledge among medical students and neurosurgery residents concluded that a significant number of medical students and residents have incomplete knowledge about concussion diagnosis and management. Another study done by Sarah et al. Physician concussion knowledge and the effect of mailing the CDC's heads up toolkit found that there were no difference in general concussion knowledge between intervention and control groups. But physicians in the intervention group were significantly less likely to recommend next day return to play after a concussion. Conclusion. Hence, after a thorough statistical analysis, it can be concluded that half of the total participants have moderate knowledge, while still a fewer percentage of physiotherapists have less knowledge regarding sports concussion. These were references. Thank you. Thank you, Hardik. Uh, do we have any questions? No questions. But then it, this one is, uh, this topic is unique. Okay. Okay. You, um, next, we have Bulbul uh, Bhajikai. Bulbul, are you there? Yes. Yes, Bulbul, go ahead. Uh, Ma'am, just a minute. I'm not able to share my PPT. Uh, Bulbul, there, there will be an option to share your screen. Uh, yes. Yeah. Did you find it? Yeah. Is it visible? Yes, it's visible. Okay. So, good afternoon, everyone. My topic for today's presentation is to assess the effectiveness of myofascial release on the patient with non-specific neck condition. So as we all know that uh, neck condition is a very neck pain is a very common condition affecting 14 to 71 percent of uh, all major population uh, uh, with the age group of 20, 22 to 25 years of age affecting their uh, affecting their day to day activities impairing their quality of life. So it is basically of a multifactorial origin which can be occur due to poor posture adapting poor posture, anxiety, depression, neck strains, those who are having occupational activities, uh, which is uh, more common in older age group, high job, high, high job demands, low social work, and poor support smoker. Now, pain is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage. Now, neck pain is referred to the pain or discomfort experienced with or without the stiffness in the region between the back of the head and the shoulders. So neck pain or the uh, neck pain is classified into two ways that is specific and non-specific. Specific when the patient knows by, from what the pain is arising, it could be either postural or the mechanical and non-specific when the patient is not aware uh, from which the uh, source of pain is coming. Now the other uh, potential contributing factor is the trigger point. So what is trigger point? It is basically an overload or injury, injury to a muscle tissue, which leads to an involuntary shortening of muscle fiber, forming a tight band. Either it could be active or passive. Active trigger points are the points which causes the spontaneous pain, either in rest or in motion during activities. Whereas passive trigger points are the points which causes pain only when the manual pressure is applied to it. As we all know that the uh, connective tissues are enveloped within the fascia. So in order to release that fascia, the connective tissue, myofascial release technique has been used. Need for the study, my neck pain is a common and important problem, which is the second most prevalent chief complaint reported by patients seeking physiotherapy care. So it affecting occupational and vocational activities of daily living. Myofascial release technique are often used in clinical setting to treat myofascial dysfunction but virtually there are only limited scientific experimental evidence supported exist to support claims of its clinical effectiveness. Thus, to fulfill the knowledge gap between the existing evidence and its clinical implication, this study was carried out. Aims and objective to determine the effectiveness of myofascial release technique in relieving pain and improving neck mobility in non-specific pain patients. Their objectives were to determine the effect of myofascial release on the pain and to determine the effect of myofascial release technique on neck mobility. So my methodology was an experimental study was carried on 100 patients. The patient was taken from the OPD setup. Explanation and consent letter was taken prior uh, from the participants. 
A uh, non-specific pain patients were taken from the OPD setup. The patients were categorized into two groups. A group, uh, group A, was the treatment group which was given the tissue movement method and facial restriction method, and group B was the control group where the stretching techniques and the self-resisted isometric cervical isometric techniques was given. Outcome measures uh, the results obtained on the VAS, that is visual analog scale for the pain rating, neck in disability index, and cervical range of motion. So the result obtained was the pain on VAS, that is group A and group B. Uh, there is a difference in uh, difference between the group A and group B. As we can see, there is a post and T. The neck, uh, neck disability index, there was also a comparison we can put me that there is a decrease in uh, score of neck dis disability index in group A, those who are rece uh, receiving the treatment. Uh, these are the cervical ranges where we could see that the flexion and extension extension ranges were extremely uh, outcome measures. Now discussion, myofascial re uh, releases uh, reduces musculoskeletal pain by following mechanism via the pain gate control theory, interpersonal attention, parasympathetic response of autonomic nervous system and release of serotonin. Now, elimination of this trigger point and reduction of pain due to above theories resulted into maintaining the neck uh, length of muscle, uh, muscle and thus improving the neck mobility. Future scope and clinical implication. The present study clinically implies that application of myofascial release, which includes tissue mobilization and facial restriction technique to treat non-specific neck pain in patients, should improvement in improving their health quality. In the present study, posterior neck muscles and soft flexors were focused, and myofascial release technique was applied, which showed significant improvement in range of motion, pain, and their physical health. These are my references. Thank you. What was your, uh, if I can ask you the question, what was your inclusion yes. criteria? The inclusion criteria, uh, I have taken the um, age group between the 18 to 20, uh, 45 years of age, which include both the genders, male but and female. You are, but your yes, uh, title mentions neck conditions. Yes, to a non-specific neck conditions. Hmm. The patients, those who are not included, uh, like any conditions like cervical spondylitis or the, any in history of any war. You mean to say non specific neck pain? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Bulbul. Uh, next is Ekta Khardi. Ekta? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Mm, how to share this? Uh... Uh, Ekta, you'll have an option called share screen. It will be in a green button. If you have the updated version of Zoom. Did you find it? Ekta? Ekta, can you hear me? Ekta, are you there? Yes, uh, she's joining, I think. Okay. Yes, right now. Sorry, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, actually, log out. Ho gaya tha. Go in. Screen. Ma'am, is my screen uh, visible? Not yet, Ekta.
um ekta will come back to you okay uh, ma'am you uh, yes. if you can fix your um, issue next we have rutuja padke uh, rutuja are you there yes ma'am hello yes rutuja ma'am is my screen visible yes rutuja you can see your screen good afternoon the title of my study is comparative effects of calisthenic exercises and motor control exercises in individuals with asymptomatic forward head posture on craniovertebral angle and postural stability a randomized clinical trial so degenerative changes in the cervical spine they start in early 20s and are present even if the individual is asymptomatic so forward head posture has become a very common adaptive postural malalignment which leads to decrease in craniovertebral angle and muscular imbalance which we commonly refer as upper cross syndrome and it also leads to postural instability so the normal center of gravity which should pass through the tragus of the ear it shifts forward so abnormal posture remains asymptomatic for some time but can advance to progression of cervical disorders therefore correction of forward head posture is necessary so calisthenic exercises and motor control exercises are different form of exercise but they both emphasize on specific muscle contraction that is why the aim of the study was to compare these two forms of exercises in forward head posture it was a single blinded parallel group randomized clinical trial conducted in tertiary care hospital belgavi the study was approved by institutional ethical committee and was registered in ctra 30 participants with asymptomatic forward head posture were selected using probability sampling and were divided into two groups using chit method and all the covid 19 precautions were taken the inclusion criteria was both genders aged between 18 to 40 years who are asymptomatic for at least 3 weeks and have cva less than 53 degrees the exclusion criteria was postural deviation that could affect uh, postural stability history of tumor vertebral infection fracture trauma injury recent surgeries vestibular disorders or peripheral neuropathy pregnant women and participants who were unable to comprehend the exercises there were three outcome measures craniovertebral angle craniocervical flexion endurance postural stability that were assessed using photographic method pressure biofeedback unit and tetrax respectively so there were two groups group a was given calisthenic exercises group b was given motor control exercises each session lasted for 45 to 60 minutes which was given thri three times a week for four weeks that included warm up and cool down exercises the calisthenic exercises comprised of chin tuck static neck exercises static plank dynamic plank scapular push ups superman exercises press up bend and reach and the motor control exercises included craniocervical flexion extension co contraction of flexors and extensors chin tuck using theraband prone eyes t's w's and y's so the result table 1 and table 2 show demographic characteristic and gender and past history of neck pain distribution the participants were homogeneously distributed in both the groups the analysis for uh, between and within group the craniovertebral angle and the craniocervical flexion endurance for calisthenic group and motor control group showed significant difference within group for both the outcome measures but in uh, between group analysis they were insignificant which means that both the intervention were equally effective for these outcome measures for postural stability risk of fall anterior posterior sway medio lateral sway in calisthenic group and motor control group showed statistical significant difference within group as well as in between groups and calisthenic group showed better improvement in terms of stability postural stability so discussion the current study showed that forward head posture and deep cervical muscle strength postural stability was improved in both the groups but calisthenics showed greater effect in postural stability the results of the current study are in consensus with the past researches done by the following authors where calisthenic exercises showed significant improvement in strength posture coordination and proprioception 
Similarly, the improvement in motor control group is supported by the randomized clinical trials done by following authors, where forward head posture and cranial cervical muscle endurance was improved. The reason behind it is both of both form of exercise that target specific muscle groups. So they provide overall stabilizing effect that resulted in improving posture strength and there is there was realignment of the center of gravity. The additional effect of calisthenics on postural uh, stability could be attributed to the training of erector spine and transverse abdominis muscle when certain exercises like static plank and uh, scapular exercises were performed, which is responsible for feedback, feed forward mechanism of postural control. So to conclude, the present study concluded that calisthenic exercises and motor control exercises are equally effective in correcting forward head posture, improving craniocervical flexion endurance, whereas effect of calisthenic exercises for postural st stability is superior than motor control exercises. Limitations, less number of sample size, there was no long-term follow-up, future scope, prospective randomized control trial comparing calisthenic and motor control exercises can be investigated and effect of these exercises in cervical related disorders can be evaluated. The current study is not funded. References. Thank you. Thank you, Ritusha. Uh, do we Ma have any questions? No, madam, no questions. Okay. Sir. Uh, Ekta, are you yes. ready? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Ekta, go ahead. I'm sharing my screen. Uh, the screen is still not visible, Ekta. Uh, they, are, uh, they are saying that you have to be in a PDF format. Okay. Okay, sorry, ma'am. I will uh, continue for in the next. Okay. Uh, next, we have Shruti. Shruti K. Uh, Shruti, are you there? Okay. Uh, moving on. Next is uh, Leona Helga Sequera. Leona? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Leona. You're next. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Liana. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. One minute, ma'am. Sure, Liana. Ma'am, can you see my screen? Leona, is it's coming? Uh, it's still uh, not visible. Okay, ma'am. Now it's loading, uh, Leona. Okay, ma'am. Um, is it visible? Um, still loading, Leona. Um, ma'am, it's showing presenting from my end. Okay. Uh, is everybody else able to view Leona's presentation? No. Okay, sir. Thank you for the confirmation. Leona, can you stop sharing and reshare it again? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Leona, we can see it. Ma'am, is it visible now? Yes, Leona, it's visible. Yes, 
ओके या गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन द टाइटल ऑफ माय स्टडी इज कंपैरेटिव इफेक्ट्स ऑफ पिलाटिस एंड प्लायोमेट्रिक्स इन इंडिविजुअल्स विद नॉन ट्रोमेटिक शोल्डर पेन अ रैंडमाइज्ड क्लिनिकल ट्रायल introduction so as we all know that shoulder pain is the most prevalent musculoskeletal condition presenting to the physicians or the physical therapists uh, so and it, uh, it the prevalence of uh, shoulder pain is almost 6% uh, in the present uh, year uh, so heavy lifting overhead working forceful work or working or sitting in poor postures are some of the uh, risk factors that cause the shoulder pain Uh, in the recent years pilates has proven to be effective in therapeutic conditions as well as in healthy individuals so pilates it is a unique method of fit, physical fitness that uses a uh hello leona can you hear me leona hello uh leona leona we can't hear you yes you're getting stuck leona your voice is cracking it's not audible uh ekta are you ready yes ma'am uh hello ma'am sorry for the delay ma'am <laughs> no problem leona if you can hear me we will take you after ekta ma'am is my screen visible Yes, Ekta, you're visible. Uh, sorry, the screen is visible. Okay, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's Ekta Kharde as a student of MPT Sports on behalf of MGM School of Physiotherapy, Aurangabad, Maharashtra, India. Would like to present my study on alterations on posture, physical activity, and quality of life of students from school to home during online studies, a cross-sectional study. to date only limited range of reliable and valid instruments have been developed for the assessment of quality of life physical activity and posture in students from school to home these measures should be multidimensional and applicable to improve day to day life it has been recommended that the impact of online studies at home have a greater impact on their posture alignment as some students prefer sitting on chair sleeping on bed or making such comfortable and constant posture during lectures or assisting any work as well as showing less interest in outdoor activities in general these all smaller changes and alter their health status in variables for the coming years in mood imbalance emotional well being low self esteem due to lack of personal space overcoming daily activities requirements minimizing communication skills lack of motivations for academics as shown in the diagram there is an imbalance in the work study time management lack of communication lack of concentration social isolations other relatives to health may be development of obsessive or compulsive behaviors sleep irregularity or understanding lectures in terms of learning and student individual doubt or problem solving and work issues can be detrimental to performance due to stress or anxiety in our study it has the online lectures has an impact on the indian society as well as on the indian economy so how society might influence the ability of online learning programs so by the societal factors such as living in a rural area being a female student or speaking a different language it has an impact on indian economy as well in a nutshell i can say a knowledge based economy is one that is still growing more jobs are created as gdp rises funding for the technology so our main aim is to evaluate the response of students on posture how it affects their physical activity and quality of life in changes from school to home directly from the offline to online lectures my study design is was a cross sectional study study population was among students 
online Google Forms were provided. A 12 questionnaire providing options were taken, including demographic data for each individual. My study setting was in India. My results, according to our outcome measures, as shown, as shown in the uh, graph is between the males and the females. So uh, in, the in the females, 80.1% of the female population responded on the studies. On the studies, it showed major impact on the female population and has more postural problems when compared to the male. And in the next graph, that is compared to the age, have shown greater impact of online learning and adapting comfortable position, which leads to musculoskeletal related pain, stiffness, and poor quality of life in the age group of 17 to 20 years of age, like in the percent 16.1 to 25 percent of 25.8 percent of age groups. Now, as our uh, survey had reached all over India, among Goa and Maharashtra only have shown 46.6% and 50.8% of effect due to online lectures on reduced physical activities as well. Now, these are some questions which we have shared in our Google form. First was, do, do you feel uncomfortable pain due to constantly being in one posture for long? So these are some postures and uh, positions which we adapt when we are in comfortable mode. So according to it, 17.4% of percentage of position was adapted by the position number six, as uh, we, uh, we can see in the diagram. Now, second question was, do you agree due to incorrect or uncomfortable position, posture concentration on lectures is affected in home online classes? So in incorrect or uncomfortable position or posture, only low back pain, lower back pain and neck pain was affected more as compared to other musculoskeletal related pain. That is 17.8%. In the next question, we added physical activity statements in which we divided into four components. That is, do you think not going to school, playing outdoor games have reduced physical activities of students? Do you think reducing physical activity of your health status is also affected? Do you think doing some physical activity or exercise at in home can overcome the daily physical health activity requirements and the aggregate of physical activities, which included endurance, stre strength, have shown a significant value of zero, less than 0 0.001. Same according to the physical activity, the quality of life statements have shown a significant value of less than 0 0.001 when you think your personal space is affected, when the concentration on the online lectures at home with the family around the situation is affected, when much effect, when the online lectures in terms of learning, understanding and student teacher in individual problems or doubts or solving session is going on and how much do you think shifting from school meeting in a person to teachers and batchmates to online telecommunications has affected your studies so all these quality of statements have shown a significant value of 0, 0 0.001 in the discussion uh, according to the castello pm et al in the study the Im the impact of covid-19 pandemic or students body posture during online learning advocated that there are musculoskeletal related changes which can be seen after six weeks of adapting the same posture. In the Apriento et al. in the study stated that there are changes with the mental health and it's negative, it, it negatively affects quality of life and academic performance in university students. So there are some uh, previous studies which shows a negative effect of online lectures when compared to the offline lectures. Our limitations of study is most of the rural areas have been left out of the studies due to lack of electronical appliances. Registrations are down due to lack of online platforms. The future scope of our study, we can promote relaxation techniques or breathing exercises, for example, in between postural adaptations. We can uh, give a physical session or physical activity exercises through a visual media which can be incorporated into online courses. So our conclusion, it concluded that the concept of life quality in Indian students is multidimensional. The physical function in particular may be linked not only to posture and health status,
but also the quality of life, especially when self-awareness is lacking. So it is important to pay specific attention to the physical activity, postural adaptations and level of concentration during learning. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ekta. Any questions? Okay, uh, moving ahead, uh, Leona, are you? Excuse me, ma'am. Sorry, yes. Uh, ma'am, yes, this is Shruti. Yes, Shruti. Uh, ma'am, um, I have some technical issue, so I'll be presenting through Rutuja's uh, laptop. Is that fine, ma'am? Yeah, sure. I'll I'll call you after Leona. Yes, ma'am. Fine. All right. Uh, Leona, are you ready? Leona, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Leona. Yeah. You can start presenting. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, can you see my slide? Yes, I can see your slide. Okay. Uh, ma'am, should I continue from the previous one or should I start it again? Uh, you, you, can you can start, start it, it again. From here. Okay. Uh, comparative effect of Pilates and plyometrics in individuals with non traumatic shoulder pain, a randomized clinical trial. So, as we all know, ma'am, is my slide changing? No, it is not. Okay, now? Yes, it is. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, so, as we all know, shoulder pain is the most prevalent musculoskeletal pain condition presenting to physicians or physical therapists. Um, so the risk factors that can lead to shoulder pain are heavy lifting, overhead working, forceful work, or working or sitting in a poor posture. So in recent years, Pilates has proven to be effective in therapeutic conditions as well as in healthy individuals. Pilates is a unique method of physical fitness that uses a combination of muscle strengthening, lengthening, and breathing to develop trunk muscles and restore uh, muscle balance. Uh, these exercises focus on pain-free motion, concentration or relax and relaxation along with breathing. So another treatment protocol that has been found to be beneficial is plyometrics. Uh, plyometrics are exercises that force a rapid lengthening of muscle prior to contraction to result in increased force output during contraction. So it is composed of three parts. Uh, first is eccentric loading, amortization time, and concentric contraction. Amortization time is the time between the eccentric loading and the concentric contraction. So comparative trials are lacking between the effects of Pilates and plyometrics in individuals with shoulder pain. Thus, this study aims to uh, compare study and compare the effects of Pilates exercise program and plyometrics in individuals with shoulder pain on muscle strength, pain, and range of motion. Methodology, a randomized clinical trial for 30 subjects was conducted with convenient sampling method in tertiary care hospital, Belagavi. The duration of the study was 12 months. The study was approved in institutional ethical committee and was registered in CTRI. 30 participants with non-traumatic shoulder pain were recruited by non-probability sampling. A randomized clinical trial for subjects was conducted, 30 subjects was conducted. The participants were randomly divided into two groups using CHIT method with group A being Pilates and group B being plyometrics. So the outcome measures were assessed during the baseline and after the intervention. So the intervention protocol was for three weeks and five sessions per week. So total uh, 15 sessions for 21 days. Uh, the outcome measures used were universal goniometer to assess the range of motion, isokinetic dynamometer to assess the shoulder external to internal ratio peak torque, shoulder pain and disability index to assess the disability, 
numerical pain rating scale to assess pain the inclusion and exclusion criteria inclusion criteria was the patients uh, participants between age group 18 to 60 years uh, diagnosed with tra non traumatic shoulder pain due to soft tissue pathologies with painful shoulder for more than 3 weeks and the participants that were willing to participate in the study participants uh, exclusion criteria was the participants with presence of cervical symptoms like neck pain radiculopathy or referred pain in the upper extremity history of traumatic injury history of shoulder neck surgery malignancy who were on physio in the past 3 months for shoulder pain so this uh, picture is is uh, the of the isokinetic dynamometer uh, which assesses the shoulder internal and external peak peak talk um the procedure for my uh, for the treatment uh, for the study was used that is the conventional treatment beginning with the conventional treatment that was hot moist pack on the affected region for 15 minutes and tens uh, for 20 minutes pilates uh, uh, for the group a that was pilates instructions regarding breathing were given uh, that is breathing in before initiating the movement and breathing out when comple when completing the movement the pilates exercises included um, uh, with mat and with theraband the pilates exercises were arms opening down waiter chest press swimming arm circle shoulder bridge with and with the theraband were biceps curl triceps pull roll out with biceps scapula isolation arm opening and external rotation plyometric uh, prone external rotation with soft weight prone forward flexion side lying horizontal abduction side lying horizontal abduction with soft weight side lying external rotation with soft weight standing external rotation with exco trainer standing flexion with exco trainer plyometric push up on bosu ball and plyometric wall push up with ipsilateral leg and plyometric wall push up on the contralateral leg so the results of my study uh, this is the demographic data and the uh, gen this table one shows the gender hand dominance and the affected side of the individual results so there was a uh, improvement in both the groups in the pre and post assessment that is in the pain pain scale spadi uh, flexion and abduction range of motion if you can tell your inclusion in criteria again yes sir so uh, so, uh between the participants between the age group 18 to 60 years uh, and the people uh, diagnosed with non traumatic shoulder pain due to soft tissue pathologies painful shoulder more than 3 weeks and the participants willing to participate in the study <coughs> so anything specific to rule out uh, frozen shoulder because it's a huge group age group that you have chosen Uh, yes sir. so the uh, individuals who can who are able to like perform uh, their movements uh, in a little pain free ranges in frozen shoulder that is in the stage 1 and 2 and the participants were screened and if they couldn't like perform the like pain free movements without any resistance or weights then they were excluded from the study Okay. Shall I proceed? Yes, please. So this was the with, within group results, and there was a difference in uh, the group one and group two pre and post uh, as, uh, treatment. This is between group results. Uh, there was improvement uh, in between group in from both the. Uh, there was no significant difference uh, for uh, for intending to have equal effect of uh, both interventions uh, within within group each group was found to be effective with or without uh, the, uh, with with the within group analysis and there uh, so in the, in this there was no significant difference 
but then uh, it it can be implied that uh, the both the groups were equally beneficial uh, for the shoulder pain individuals discussion the present trial was conducted to compare the effects of pilates and plyometrics in individuals with non traumatic shoulder pain it can be interfered from the results that both the pilates and plyometrics can give beneficial effects on shoulder pain in terms of all the outcome parameters like pain disability range of motion and strength when it was applied with conventional therapy treatment in a study done by uh, atilgan et al uh, that was the title the effects of clinical pilates exercises on patients the pain it was hello leona ability was as is using a uh, vast and uh, shoulder pain and disability index so in this can you all hear me uh yes uh, leona you just um, got stuck in the middle for a while you can continue and wrap up leona hello yeah if you could uh, uh, conclude your paper we can move ahead yeah. yes ma'am okay so the conclusion of my study is uh, that both the pilates and plyometrics is effective in treating shoulder pain with respect to reduction in pain improvement in quality of life and functional abilities mobility and strength of the shoulder limitation no follow up assessment to understand the carry over effects of both and difficulty in performing plyometrics by few participants a uh, future scope would be long term follow up studies are warranted to address these questions more studies with plyometrics on shoulder pain and the study effects uh, study of effects of plyometrics among different age groups the current study was not funded and i would like to thank all of my participants for their time and effort and my guide and my uh, family thank you thank you leona um, so do you have any thank questions thank you ma'am no questions madam okay sir uh, moving ahead uh, shruti yes ma'am yes shruti you can go ahead and present yes ma'am Can you see my PPT, ma'am? Yes, we can see your PPT. Okay. Uh, title of my study is uh, "Comparative Effect of Stabilization Sensory Motor Exercises and Virtual Reality on Pain, Range of Motion, Function, and Postural Sway in Non-Specific Neck Pain." It's a randomized barrel group study. Uh, introduction: uh, Chronic neck pain. It is a common complaint in adult, and it's a major health burden. The non-specific neck pain is commonly results from postural or mechanical and any degenerative changes. Sensory motor exercise involve maintaining the head and neck in their proper position and then introducing the destabilizing forces into body by improving neuromuscular pathways. The stabilization sensory motor exercise have significant effects on neck pain in terms of pain, uh, impaired cervical joint position sense and proprioception. The virtual reality device also have an effect in management of neck pain, impairment in cervical kinematics, and increasing the neck range of motion by introducing the gamification technique. The purpose of this study is to determine and compare the effect of stabilization sensory motor exercises and virtual reality in individuals with non-specific neck pain. Methodology is a randomized parallel group trial was conducted for thirty subjects with age group between twenty to forty years. with convenient sampling method a random, uh, random allocation of subjects into two equal groups 15 in each group was done intervention for two groups group a was stabilization sensory motor exercises and group b was virtual reality 
A study was approved by uh, Institutional Ethical Committee was registered in CTRI. All the COVID-19 precautions based on ICMR guidelines were also taken. Uh, inclusion criteria, uh, the subjects with non-specific neck pain or symptom lasts for uh, more than three months. Age group between 20 to 40 years old uh, was, uh, it's more than three on uh, zero to 10 centimeter of scale. Uh, neck disability, a score of 10 or more than 10. Uh, inclusion cri exclusion criteria, previous history of neck and head trauma or any surgery, neurological condition that could affect like uh, vestibular pathology, uh, vertigo, dizziness from ear or brain disorder or any vascular uh, disorders and cognitive impairment. Outcome measures used were uh, a visual analog scale were used for uh, pain intensity, universal goniometer for measurement of neck range of motion, neck disability index for functional disabilities and posturegraphy system for measurement of postural sway. Interventions were given for five times a week for two weeks. Uh, it's a 35 to 40 minutes of duration, including warm up and cool down period. Uh, these are the exercise which were given. Uh, result of the study, the table one, which shows that uh, general characteristics of participants there was no significant difference were found in all participant characteristic of age, height, weight, and BMI. Uh, this is uh, in this table too, which shows that uh, within group difference in pre and post of group A, that is stabilization sensory motor exercise, uh, in which there was no uh, there was significant reduction in uh, VAS neck disability index and neck range of motion and also risk of fall. But there was no significant uh, reduction in uh, anterior posterior sway and also the lateral sway. Uh, table three shows the within group difference uh, within group pre and post to test using T test was for group B, that is virtual reality. There was significant reduction in uh, uh, pain that was neck disability index, neck range of motion, and risk of falls. But in this group also, there was no significant reduction in AP sway and also lateral sway. Uh, this is for the between group analysis was done between uh, both the groups, uh, sensory motor exercises and the virtual reality. There was no statistic statistically significant difference was seen between both the groups. This suggests that both the groups are equally effective for treating the non-specific neck pain. Uh, discussion, this present trial was conducted to compare the effectiveness of stabilization sensory motor exercises and virtual reality on non-specific neck pain. It can be inferred from results that both the stabilization sensory motor exercise and virtually based exercise are equally beneficial to treat non-specific neck pain. In terms of all outcome parameters, it was applied together with conventional therapy treatment. The virtual reality guided exercise helps in improvement of neck range of motion reduction of pain, but limited ev evidence suggests that stabilization sensory motor exercise can help in improvement of neck pain and functional ability, but their effects on joint position sense and balance impairment remain uncertain. The result of current study are taken in consensus with the past researcher done by a study was done by Lynn et al. in 2019. He found out that virtual reality has significant effect on pain relief, motor function, and joint mobility for patients with chronic musculoskeletal disorder. The Hilaris and Bharat et al. in 2014, he said that the kinematic training exercise along with interactive virtual reality device appeared to improve neck disability, cervical range of motion, and dynamic balance and patient satisfaction rates in people with chronic neck pain. Zatchi uh, et al. in 2005 said that use of external focus of attention rather than internal focus may lead to uh, advance in motor learning performance and can be important feature of sensory motor exercises. Conclusion of study which said that it, the study concluded that both the uh, sensory motor exercise and virtual reality are effective in treating non-specific neck pain, in reduction of pain, increasing neck range of motion function, except for postural sway. Limitation of study, the future study um, needed to be with larger uh, patient sample size long, and also the longer intervention period in order to evaluate our results. Future scope of study, uh, we can use this intervention in other musculoskeletal disorder related to neck uh, here we could like to thank all the participants for their time and effort. These are the references. Thank you. Thank you, Shruti. Uh, so do you have any questions? No. Uh, next, we have e-poster presentation by Samriti. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Samriti. 
Ma'am, is my screen visible? It's loading, Samriti. Yes, am I audible see. now? Yes. Yes, you're audible, and we can see your uh, screen. In the topic myofascia release with slide the neural mobilization in management of survival. Hello, Samriti. Yes, ma'am. Uh, your voice is cracking. Uh, one second, ma'am. Ma'am, now is it okay? Yes. Okay. So cervical radiculopathy is a condition and a disorder uh, of nerve root that is commonly caused by some kind of inflammation. Occurring from a space of lesion. In upper face muscle. This study is aimed to evaluate the benefits of myofascial release therapy on pain severity in patients with myofascial pain syndrome associated with cervical radiopathy. It was an environmental uh, pilot study. A uh, convenient sampling was done in community settings of uh, in particular age to 35 years in the study. Exclusion criteria is any systematic illness, uh, biological or psychological effects. Neck disability index scale, pressure algometer for pain pressure, and motion. The participants by taking detailed history and neurological examination. Treatment uh, sessions for two size a week. Uh, at three years, uh, treatment session, conventional therapy of 10 minutes and manual surgical treatment uh, in test one, along with myofascial release and neural mobilization technique. The neck and disability index, numerical painting scale, and pressure sold was used as outcome measures. Uh, the readings for outcome were taken at the baseline and after post intervention two weeks. So the results we found, as you can see in uh, the graph, we found significant difference in the NDI and PRS of the network and had the most significant pressure for the significant uh, after the treatment of uh, two weeks. So, according to recent studies and severity treatment extraction, therapy have shown and focus on a standard point. This study. Hello, Samriti. Are you here? Hello. Yes, Samriti. Uh, Ma'am, sorry, did you some technical issue? No problem. Continue. Yeah, so I continue from this session. Yeah, uh, you have two yeah. more minutes and you can continue. Okay, so uh, in discussion, I would like to tell you about a recent studies that show that conservative treatment like traction, thermotherapy extra, have short term effect and focus on uh, associated tender point in uh, muscles were lacking. So this study shows that MFR in addition to other approaches can significantly improve the pain and neck functional outcome in cervical radiculopathy. To conclude this study, we found that use of MFR technique in addition to conventional treatment substantially improved the patient outcome. So these were my references. The limitation of study was uh, it has a uh, pilot study, so a lesser number of sample size. So future scope is large number of study, uh, large number of participants included in study can validate the results for the study. Thank you. Thank you, Samriti. So, do you have any questions? No. Okay. Uh, next, we have Rutuja Vani. Yes. Hello. Can you? Yes. Hear me? Yes, Rutuja. Just one second. Yeah. Is my screen visible? Yes, your screen is visible. So my topic is qualitative and quantitative assessment of foot and ankle complex in post-stroke patients, a systematic review. 
So as we know, foot ankle is a highly complex and adaptable functional unit, which combine to provide flexibility as well as stability to maintain the upright posture. Foot is a so direct source of contact with the ground, and thus its function is important in bed bearing task. And uh, on the other hand, stroke is a major problem affecting health worldwide. And as reported by WHO, it is the second most common cause of mortality and leading cause of disability. Approximately 30% of chronic stroke patients suffer from an abnormal asymmetric static foot posture and equinus and equinovirus foot deviations. These deformities can result into smaller base of support, which further causes kinetic and kinematic gait abnormalities in the stroke patients. The altered foot posture also affects the lower extremity strength, the uh, ankle joint range of motion, and thus interaction among various uh, musculoskeletal aspects, which include muscle spasticity, weakness, impaired motor control during amputation, and reduced foot sensation causes joint abnormalities in foot and ankle joint and results in hemiplegic gait. Hence, it is needed to consider the foot ankle complex and routine examination of post stroke patients. And thus, this paper aims to systematically review various neuromuscular assessment components in foot, which enhance the lower extremity recovery and functional outcomes in post stroke patients. Methods the first strategy used was. Uh, a population intervention component of PICO were used during this search strategy and a systematic search was carried out in PubMed Web of Science Corpus in May 2021. Uh, the search term, uh, different search term were used and uh, study selection for the inclusion criteria were adult with subacute or chronic stroke who could ambulate and the exclusion criteria articles not published in English, uncontrolled trials or case reports. Data extraction and analysis, all the eligible articles were screened and the data were extracted by the author. Uh, and for methodological quality NIS scale was used, which has 14 components. Total eight studies were included in the systematic review out of uh, uh, the prisma flowchart of the study selection is given over here. So uh, now uh, all the total studies, starting from 2003 to 2019, the studies were included. And all the studies included subacute to chronic stroke patients, uh, which further assessed the foot, uh, foot ankle spasticity, the muscle strength, the de foot deviation, and uh, sensations of the foot. The results of the uh, studies were yeah, first components being foot posture. Most commonly foot posture index scale has been used. And according to the four articles included in the review, uh, pronated foot has been seen in 25% of the patients, whereas supinated foot in 16 patients in the chronic ambulatory. Then comes ankle range of motion. Two studies compared the ankle range of motion in stroke patients and healthy individuals. And according to them, decreased dorsiflexion range of motion is observed on the affected side. Ankle muscle spasticity in post-stroke. Chronic stroke patients commonly presented with hypotonicity with modified Ashworth scale score. Uh, uh, grade scoring from 0 to 2 in ankle plantar flexes is most common. And moreover, the spasticity of the ankle plantar flexes correlates significantly with the comfortable gait velocity measured by a 10 meter walk test. Then the next component is ankle muscle strength. In the selective studies, the strength was measured using the handheld dynamometer in chronic ambulatory stroke patients. The study suggested that ankle muscle strength, plantar flexes, and dorsiflexes of the affected side was evidently smaller than the unaffected side and the mean strength of plantar flexes were greater than the dorsiflexes, suggesting that the, uh, the dorsiflexes are weaker. And one of the studies included in the article also correlated the strength with walking speed in subacute to chronic stroke patients. The next component is foot sensations post-stroke. Reduced dust sensation on affected side, especially on the plantar aspect of first metatarsopharyngeal joint as compared to the non-affected side. 
Then comes the center of pressure. Independent ambulatory subacute stroke patients showed a larger anterior posterior displacement of center of pressure, uh, pressure when compared to patients who need walking aid while ambulating. Now comes to the discussion. Uh, this review has examined the qualitative and quantitative assessment of foot ankle using subjective and objective scales and the preliminary assessment includes musculoskeletal as well as neurological components. The increased foot pronation is present to ex uh, depending upon the studies, they are saying that increased foot pronation is present to expand the plantar surface of the foot that is in contact with the ground to increase the sensory information received by the foot. So this can be explained as compensatory mechanism as to gain functionally important information regarding the position of the body. Thus, it is possible that the changes in the static foot posture post stroke could be because of reduced proprioception input. Whereas the supinated uh, foot is thought to be because of higher degree of spasticity in the plantar flexures. Then the next component, uh, reduced dorsiflexion range of motion can be due to the stiffness and increased spasticity in plantar flexures, ankle joint pathology and dorsiflexor weakness. The increased plantar flexor spasticity during stance phase may cause an excessive plantar flexion at pre swing phase, which result in difficulty in foot clearance and therefore increase swing time. The weakness of dorsiflexors causes inadequate dorsiflexion control during gait, which increases the swing time of the affected leg for foot clearance and double leg support time, which leads to slow walking speed. The last component, sensory input from the plantar aspect of the foot is thought to contribute to postural stability and provide information on body position via plantar mechanism contributing to an awareness of foot position sense. So the impact joint position sense affects the foot landing and result in a longer swing time of the affected side. So to conclude the study, the studies about the neuromusculoskeletal examination of foot ankle complex in post-stroke patients found supinated, pronated foot, decreased strength of dorsiflexus, spasticity in plantar flexors, um, most commonly grade 0 to grade 2, reduced range of motion in uh, dorsiflexus and impaired sensation mostly on the plantar aspect of the uh, foot. So my key uh, message is by identifying these most common impairments in foot ankle complex, it may help us in designing efficient uh, intervention program for stroke rehabilitation for each individual. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rutuja. One. Sir, so, okay. do you have any questions? No, madam. Next, we have Madhura Sohani. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Madhura, you can go ahead and present. Is my screen visible? Yes, your screen is visible. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. I am presenting poster on my systematic review, the effectiveness of wrist manipulative therapy in patients with lateral epicondylitis. Introduction, lateral epicondylitis is a chronic degenerative condition associated with pain on the lateral uh, epicondyle of the elbow at the common extensor origin of the forearm. It is observed in about 1-3% to adults among general population. According to a recent systematic review and meta-analysis, conservative treatment showed statistical and clinical improvement in pain and functional scores compared to placebo or injections Hence, it was recommended that uh, conservative treatment should be prioritized before considering any other intervention. Another review by Bissets et al. stated that manual therapy approaches to the cervical spine or elbow and wrist joint may relieve discomfort and increase pain-free grip strength immediately post-treatment, uh, but there is inadequate evidence regarding the long-term uh, effect of the manual therapy. Another recent review by Lucado et al. concluded that there was evidence uh, to support MWM or uh, Mills manipulation at, uh, as an intervention to reduce pain in case of lateral epicondylitis. But there are limited studies specifically considering wrist mobilization in lateral epicondylitis. Hence, the goal of this systematic review was to see if wrist joint mobilization improves pain, range of motion, and disability in patients with lateral epicondylitis. Uh, methodology. 
a literature search in the english language was carried out using uh, using databases like pedro proquest web of science cochran and pubmed inclusion criteria was RT rcts with subjects about 18 years and clinically diagnosed with uh, lateral epicondylitis outcome measures considered were uh, pain and range of motion quality assessment was done by using pedro scale uh prisma chart a total of 191 articles were primarily recognized for inclusion uh, in the potential inclusion then of these 21 uh, were identified as duplicates based on the title and abstract search 155 articles were excluded out of 170 articles then uh, out of these 15 papers were considered eligible for uh, full text review after full text screening we excluded eight uh, studies because of the reasons like uh, inappropriate intervention uh, or poor quality of the study coming to the results first is uh, pain all the studies showed significant decrease in pain except for the one study regarding range of motion only two studies assessed wrist range of motion both the studies did not find any significant difference between the conservative and wrist manipulation group there are few limitations of this review like in this review we have included a article of uh, with pedro score 4 which gives a low to moderate quality of evidence thus uh, it has substantial risk of a study selection bias then uh, in addition there was not a true control group in included studies and comparison group also had different modalities as the treatment option with risk and uh, with risk mobilization then uh, plus uh, another is the exclusion criteria was not well defined uh, to rule out other causes of lateral elbow pain so this review concludes that based on the presently available convincing evidence wrist joint mobilization improves pain when compared against the control group in the management of lateral epicondylitis thank you thank you madhura so do you have any questions no madam um next we have pratiksha rahani hello ma'am hi pratiksha uh is the screen visible yes pratiksha it's visible okay. uh good evening everyone my uh, title uh, for my poster presentation is prevalence of plantar fasciitis among traffic police in belgavi city and observational studies uh we will start with the introduction uh heel pain which may lead to plantar fasciitis is one of the most frequently seen cumulative trauma disorder caused by repetitive movements and faulty biomechanics it can be seen in people working in prolonged standing position for several hours like traffic police so uh, the literature available on musculoskeletal disorders in traffic police of india is not available uh, is not uh, enough to comment on so hence this study was undertaken objective of the study was to uh, study the prevalence uh, of pre uh, plantar fasciitis among traffic police in belgavi city a uh, methodology study design and observational study study type and cross a cross sectional study so the sampling design was convenient sampling sample size was 104 uh, inclusion criteria prior participants in the age group of uh, 25 to 55 years participants with heel pain uh, like medial plantar uh, medial plantar pain and uh, bottom region for at least 3 months uh participants with duty hours of at least 4 to 8 hours of standing uh exclusion criteria participants with a history of systemic disease trauma prior foot surgery or any uh, intraarticular injections within last 3 months participants with duty hours less than 4 4 hours of standing outcome measures used were pain pain assessment you was done by a uh, visual analog scale uh the last test for uh, plantar fasciitis and uh, foot posture index 6 uh so the results were uh, overall prevalence of plantar fasciitis among traffic police was found to be 25% with right foot having 73.08% and left foot having 68.27% of prevalence in table 1 we can see the prevalence of plantar fasciitis uh so uh it is uh, as a whole it is 25% and uh, in the table next table a uh, comparison of plantar fasciitis uh, 
of right side of the right foot with a uh, right and left foot, foot posture index is seen so uh, it is a uh, it can be means it is for significant as we can see the p value is less than 0 0.05 uh, in table 3 icf qualifiers uh, icf documentation was used to uh, 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 comment uh, to see the uh, impact on the impact of plantar fasciitis on the uh, activities of daily living so uh, boards uh, five co mostly a uh, moderate impairment was seen in uh, walking long distance, uh, toileting, uh, maintaining a body position, driving, pushing with lower lip. Uh, walking long distance uh, was affected, uh, it was seen, uh, this impairment was seen in 72 participants. Uh, toileting was impaired in 29 participants. Uh, maintaining a body position was seen in 68. Uh, driving was impaired in uh, 20, 70 participants and pushing with lower limb was impaired in 62 participants. Uh, in discussion, a study by Ahmed et al. Uh, commented on prevalence of plantar fasciitis among traffic wardens, which showed 38.7% incidence of plantar fasciitis. So on comparison of the above mentioned study with the current study, the current study not only features the incidence, but also emphasizes on other factors such as posture of the foot, severity and its impact on the ADLs with the help of ICF documentation. The maximum limitation was noted in walking long distance, toileting, maintaining a body position, driving and pushing with lower limb. Factors, uh, so we can say that factors like weight and uh, foot posture of an individual does play an important role in development of plantar fasciitis. Uh, as 42% uh, of the participants were overweight, because of which approximately 82% of the participants had overpronation of the feet. Uh, in conclusion, 25% uh, of the uh, 25% prevalence of plantar fasciitis was noted among uh, traffic police of Belgavi city. Uh, prevalence noted is more evident in uh, right foot as compared to the left foot. Due to prolonged standing and presence of obesity, there was overpronation of the feet, which may have also aided in the development of plantar fasciitis. Uh, ICF and uh, FPI 6, that is foot posture index 6, were, were found to be equivalent in measuring disability due to prolonged standing and heel pain. Hence, uh, we can say that ICF documentation is useful in quantifying uh, disability and is recommended for use in community-based studies. Thank you. Thank you for Diksha. Um, sir, do you have any questions? No, madam. Thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, Shruti S. Gachi. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, Shruti, you can go ahead and present. Uh, ma'am, the screen is visible. Yes, it's visible, Shruti. Uh, good evening, everyone. My title for poster presentation is Prevalence of Nonspecific Low Back Pain Among Auto Rickshaw Drivers in Belagami City, an Observational Study. Introduction, a low back pain is a very common health condition worldwide and is a major cause of disability. In occupational driver, uh, activity limitation is a leading cause for work absences, imposing high economic burden on individuals, families, communities, and industry and government. Arthro divers are commonly affected due to their strenuous workload and faulty posture, as they often sit one or two passengers in front with them. Objective of the study, to determine the prevalence of non-specific low back pain in auto rickshaw drivers of Belagami city. Uh, methodology, 122 auto rickshaw drivers uh, in the age group of 20 to 55 years working for at least two years with complaints of non-specific low back pain since a six months were screened using Ossistry Low Back Pain Disability Questionnaire and ICF documentation. Performance and capacity to perform activity was evaluated with the help, help of ICF qualifiers. Uh, result, uh, a positive association between age, type of vehicle and year of driving with Ossistry Low Back Pain Disability score was noted. As in table one, associ uh, association between age, type and the type of vehicle and year of driving, we can see as the age increases, the disability also increases. 
and in type of vehicle it is seen that uh, in lever start vehicle uh, there are there is more disability than the push start vehicle and uh, in year of driving as the year as the year of uh, driving increases the disability also increases uh, according to obesity uh, low back pain disability uh, questionnaire 17.21% had mild disability 68.85% had moderate disability and 13.93% had severe disability as per icf qualifiers maximum participants reported moderate difficulty in performing of sitting bending maintaining a sitting posture lifting putting down object and driving uh, this icf qualifier we can see in table 2 as uh, here we can see uh, there are more maximum participant in moderate impairment than in the severe impairment uh, discussion a study by s agarwal et al on prevalence and risk factor for uh, low back pain in auto rickshaw drivers in urban kolkata shows that 12 point prevalence of low back pain was 79.8% and 7 days point prevalence was 36% forward bent and twisted sitting posture was significant associated with low back pain the current study not only highlights the prevalence but also informs the impact of activity of daily living with the help of icf documentation conclusion 68.85% of auto drivers in uh, belagavi city had non specific low back pain sitting bending maintaining maintaining a sitting posture lifting putting down object and uh, driving were noted to be difficult in uh, in maximum number of participant uh, i hence icf documentation is useful in evaluating disability and can be used in further management of treatment strategies thank you thank you shruti sir do you have any questions no madam uh next we have jyoti parki jyoti hello Hello, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, Jethi, you're audible. One second, ma'am. Uh... Hello. Ma'am, am I audible right now? Yes, Jethi, you are. Yes, ma'am. One second. Yes, uh, ma'am. Jesse, a lot of background noise is there. Okay, one second, ma'am. Give me a minute. Yes. Is is this okay, ma'am? Yes, this is better. Okay. Thank Should you. I can I start? Yes, you can start. Okay. Good evening, everybody. The topic for my study is comparative effect of mechanical muscle percussion and I hamstring on hamstring and thoracolumbar fascia in individual non-specific low back pain. Or, uh, ma'am, am I audible? Jethi, yes, you... the background noise is also equally audible. Okay, okay, one second, one second, one second. Hello. Yes, Jethi. Yes, ma'am. Can I resume now again? Yeah, you can. Okay, ma'am. The topic for my study is comparative effect of mechanical muscle percussion and ISTM on hamstring and thoracolumbar fascia in individuals with non-specific lower back pain, a randomized parallel study group. As we all know, lower back pain is one of the leading health problems that isn't always pathological but mechanical. and the fascia the tightness of fascia which surrounds the muscle it presents reduced range of motion muscle strength and decreased soft tissue extensibility leading to low back pain to release the myofascial variety of tools have been used which manipulating which is done by manipulating soft tissue by stretching the area of tight fascia gently mechanical muscle percussion has found to be effective in low non specific low back pain hamstring tightness postural sway and by a soft tissue manipulation and strengthening of the trunk and hamstring muscle thus this study is to determine and compare the effects of percussion gun device with istm technique apl application with respect to pain flexibility and postural sway in low back pain <clears throat> methodology the experimental uh, study is the study design and the study type is a randomized parallel group study 
one second. As you can see, the sample size is 28 with an inclusion criteria of individuals between age group from 18 to 55 years old with people having lower back pain for at least three months and individuals with flexion recorded more than 20 degrees being tested in active knee extension test. For exclusion criteria, participants with pathology such as infection, inflammatory diseases, etc., and subjects with uh, neurological deficit and any mental illnesses and also subjects with medication for <clears throat> corticosteroid, antidepressant, and anti-inflammatory medication. Procedure, the participants were divided into two groups, group A, which was for the percussion gun, and group B, which was for the ISTM. And <clears throat> hot, hot HMP and interferential therapy was given to all participants, followed by a multi-core step stability exercise program. The outcome measures used here is active knee extension test, sit and reach test, visual analog scale, and postrography system tetrax. <clears throat> Results. Uh, for the demographic profile, the gender distribution was homogeneous, with 15 males and 13 females were recruited. Within group analysis, the results showed significant for both the groups, as you can see in the table below. And for the independent sample T test, between both the groups, there was no significant difference found for the outcome parameters, but except for the parameters in active knee extension test and sit and reach. As you can see, ma'am, in this table, the significance were found for sit and reach and ankle <coughs> and active knee extension test. Discussion. Studies in the past have shown that this study can also seem contradictory as back pain is diminished by stretching of tight muscle. It does not actually have to be contradictory. However, because more flexible muscle probably alter the load from the painful sides. So in accordance to a study, the possible relation between mild mechanical low back pain and hamstring tightness was proven. Hence, this study found that these findings and, the, and their pathomechanical consequences should be considered while constructing effective rehabilitation protocols for patients with mechanical low back pain. Conclusion, according to the present study, improvement was seen in both the groups, thus muscle percussion gun and ISTM are equally effective in treating non-specific low back pain. I would like to also thank my guide and participant for giving time and cooperation and sorry for the disturbance too. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Jethi. Um, sir, do you have any questions? No questions, mother. Okay, sir. Uh, moving on, we have uh, video presentations coming up. First is Sharma Neha Narendra Bhai. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am.
मैम इट्स नॉट ऑडिबल इज इट नॉट ऑडिबल नो मैम um the video sound is only this much ma'am should i start start from my side Neha, yes, you can share. It is not audible. Is visible? Yes, it's visible, Neha. Okay. हेलो नेहा Yes, uh, Neha, the video is not being played. Okay, ma'am, one second. हेलो नेहा आई यू सेंग समथिंग बिकॉज योर वॉइस इज रियली आई मीन रियली लो वन सेकेंड मैम is kakkad khushali jagdish here in the yes ma'am present okay uh, khushali be ready you will be next okay ma'am neha do you need some time yes ma'am are you ready no ma'am after khushali i start okay uh, khushali go ahead then Ma'am, mine is video presentation, so uh, you will start the video. Okay, I'll start the video then. Okay, ma'am, thank you.
greetings to one and all. The title of my paper presentation is to study the relationship between low back pain and sleep disturbance in office workers. Introduction. In today's society, sleep disturbance and low back pain are both common problems which threaten health. Non-specific low back pain is a lumbar pain without a pathological cause and its incidence is highest on the low back pains. The prevalence of low back pain has increased among office workers in general. Low back pain is a common complaint of many patients who seek medical care. 60 to 80 percent of human beings experience low back pain at least one time in their life. Sleep consists an equally complex and vital biological function with behaviorally driven goal to maintain homostasis across multiple physiological systems. Sleep is essential for physiological restoration, learning, memory, and cognition. 6 to 15 percent of sleep disturbance is prevalent among the general population. Changes in term of quality, quantity, and sleep pattern causes sleep disturbance. Sleep disturbance leads to decreased work ability, increased sleep leaves, and higher energy expenditure rate. Previous study found that sleep disturbance plays a significant role in chronic pain. But the correlation between low back pain and sleep disturbance in office workers have not been adequately explored. So here rises a need to study the relationship between low back pain and sleep disturbance in office workers. Methodology, study design, observational study, collection of data. Data were collected from different companies such as private limited, ECS, IT companies, Adobe Web Solution, and other companies located in Antibar and Kathmandu. Method of data collection. Data was collected by Google Form and personal people. Sample size, 60 subjects. Sampling method, convenient sampling. The procedure of the study, 60 office workers were selected who met the inclusion and exclusion criteria of my study. Office workers were asked to fill up the modified postures, low back pain, disability questionnaire for low back pain, and its work sleep quality index scale for sleep disturbance sent through Google form and through personal interview. After the uh, responses were obtained, scores were calculated for each participant and data analysis was done using SPSS version 20. The inclusion criteria: willingness of the subject to participate in the study, age group of 20 to 35 years were included, both male and female are included, using computers for more than six hours a day and weekly more than 36 hours. Now the exclusion criteria, subjects with the history of any special medical condition affecting the lumbar spine, such as ankylosis spondylitis, tumor, infection, rheumatoid arthritis, fracture of lumbar or thoracic vertebrae, any previous surgery that may cause low back pain, any previous medical condition that affects the psychological factors, all these uh, subjects were excluded. When the results were con uh, conducted, the data was analyzed using SPSS version 20. The data was not normally distributed, so I applied Spearman's road test. Uh, the mean and uh, standard deviation of the age, the working hours of the office workers, the mean and standard deviation of uh, uh, modified Austria disability questionnaire and Pittsburgh sleep questionnaire index is as below. So from the result, this, it, is, it shows that there is a significant positive correlation between low back pain and sleep disturbance with the R value of 0 0.899. So the result shows below, which shows the positive correlation between Pittsburgh sleep questionnaire and modified Austria's low back pain disability questionnaire. The, graph, the dot graph shows the positive correlation between the, both the scales. Discussion. This study is conducted to see the relationship between low back pain and sleep disturbance in office worker 
with the age group of 20 to 35 years. In this study, results suggest that there is a positive significant correlation between low back pain and sleep disturbance in office work. Acute and chronic reduction in duration and quality of sleep has been shown to induce excessive expenditure of from pro-inflammatory cytokines and also IL-6 increases pain intensity in neuropathic pain. Pain has been reported to have bidirectional relationship with sleep, sleep disturbance and also increases pain threshold and mental capacity to manage the pain. Helen J. Burks in 2019 found sleep disturbance was regulated significantly was related significantly with chronic pain intensity and function via both direct and indirect pathways. Veronica Leonard in 2015 found a high prevalence of sleep disturbance of 82.5 percentage among patients with chronic low back pain. Marin R. in 2006 found that chronic low back pain significantly affects quality of sleep. The conclusion of the study is there is a positive correlation between low back pain and sleep disturbance in office worker. One of the one of the most important uh, limitation of my study is that other factors such as age, gender, working year experience, psychological factors such as anxiety, depression, and stress, which may affect the pain, are not included in the study. The future scopes of my study are that uh, benefits of further investigations could be brought in by large sample size. Further studies can be done by considering factors such as working year experience, psychological factors such as anxiety, depression, and stress, and also different populations like student, teachers, housewife, etc. could be taken. No financial funding was taken for this study. I would like to thank all the participants for being a part of my study. These are my references. Thank you. I know the name of the presenter again. Yes, sir. It is uh, Kushali. Yes, sir. Kushali. <clears throat> yes, sir. Ma'am, we can move on to the next presenter. Okay, sir. So uh, the next presenter is uh, Patel Moshmi Hasmukhbhai. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Moshmi, do you want to present or should I present your video? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, you will. Uh, I having a video presentation. So you have to screen the video. Is my screen visible? No, ma'am. Yes, to me it is visible, madam. Okay. Now? Yes, ma'am, it is visible. Okay. Regards to one and all presented. So today is my Today, my topic for the presentation is immediate effect of myofascial release of erector spine on pain and muscle flexibility in non-specific low back pain, an experimental study. So starting with the introduction part, low back pain is one of the most common disabling disorder that affects the 68% to 81% of the world's population. It is projected that 30% of all low back pain cases will lead to the chronic low back pain. Chronic low back pain includes the numerous structure. However, most chronic low back pain patients, individuals with an unknown pathology, include the musculoskeletal dysfunction. So, soft tissue should be addressed in the course of the treatment. Physical therapy and the use of the myofascial technique target the reduction of the muscular strain connected tissue restriction for those with the chronic low back pain. This reduces the potential for ongoing pathology. Low back pain is majorly associated with the muscle stiffness or the pec located in the lumbar region of the trunk. 
the most exercise method target the lumbar erector spine muscle for the greater trunk stability lumbar erector spine is attached to the lumbar vertebral column and directly act as a extend the spine at the lumbar region myofascial release is a collection of approaches and techniques that focusing on freeing the restriction of movement that originate in the soft tissue of the body due to the physical tightness it is applied in order to maximally promote the relaxation of tense tissue that triggers the pain the application of control and focus force applied in a purposeful direction act to stretch or elongate the muscular and the facial structure towards the goal of restoring the fluid lubricative quality of the facial tissue the mobility of the tissue and normal the joint function methodology study design it is the ex experimental study source of data the subjects which taken from the amdavad district study duration is one month sample size is a 22 adult participants at there there are some inclusion and exclusion criteria are there the inclusion criteria the patient the subjects willing to participate are included in this study age between the 18 to 34 year are included both male and female are included in this study onset of the low back pain is less than 6 week means sub acute and the chronic conditions only are included in this study exclusion criteria individuals with low back pain caused by the specific pathology or the condition were excluded pregnancy related back pain is also excluded history of the back surgery spinal fracture within the 6 month and the spinal tumor this all criteria are excluded from for this study material which is used for this study is a consigned form which is filled up by the patient measure tape which is used for the tightness test the tightness of the erector spine pen and the paper procedure there is screening for low back pain patient total 22 subjects are screening for the low back pain this all subjects are going for the testing the tightness of the lumbar erector spine as well as the nprs after that they are included and they excluded uh, there are the 20 number of the subjects are included in the study and there are the two uh, subjects are excluded from the study those subjects which are included in the study are given with the mfi protocol in that the continuously for the 5 minutes toward both the side of the thoracolumbar lumbar fascia i given and the cross handed technique is used for the mfi the result which arrived so the analysis was done by using the spss version 20 data did not fall according to the normal distribution so the non parametric test will cox and sign rank test is used according to the data there was a significant statistical improvement on immediate effect of mfr in pain and muscle flexibility as well so the p value for the pain is less than or equal to 0.004 and p is less than or equal to uh, 0.03 this this table are showing the pre mean and the post mean the difference of the mean and the pre value are shown the graph which shows the pre and the post comparison of the nprs and the erector spine tightness is this discussion there are studies which shows that application of myofascial release on erector spine in patient with the low back pain significantly reduces pain and flexibility but very few study which analyzes the immediate effect of an isolated mfr protocol in low back pain subjects are present with regard to the main aim of this study a result showed a statistically significant decrease in the degree of pain in mfr group measured by means of the numerical pain rating scale the result of this study showed a decrease both in the pain as well as the flexibility at the end of the protocol among the individual who received the mfr according to the another study when mfr applied to the neck pain patients their extension angle significantly increased 
and when it was applied to the patient with the short and inosuous muscles, their waist flexion angle is also increased. So in the present study as well, when MFR was applied to the low back pain, pain significantly decreased and the flexibility significantly improved. It is considered that MFR decreased the pain, which in turn increased the movement and the flexibility. So we found a major improvement in the pain and flexibility of individuals receiving the MFR treatment who had not shown before the intervention. This might suggest that the effect of the MFR technique has is mediated by the releasing facial restriction and eventually decrease the tightness and reducing pain by improving the blood circulations, which allowing the normalization of movement also. So the conclusion of this study is, from the above result, it can be concluded that myofacial release for the shorter duration is also effective in alleviating the primary symptoms of pain and the movement restrictions, thus enhancing the functional capabilities of the patients. Thus, myofacial release can be used as an effective adjunct in a case of non-specific movement pain. There are some limitations of that study. The first is this study has a smaller sample size. And the second is the short duration of the treatment or the lack of the long-term follow-up. This we could not ascertain whether, whether the observed beneficial the effect would remain after the two months. The future scope of this study is future investigations would benefit from larger sample size especially considering the observed descriptive tendency toward a positive effect of MFR on stiffness-related characteristics. In the financial support, there are no funding was taken for this study. And finally, I would like to thank all the participants for being part of this study. These all are the reference of my study. Thank you. Thank you, Mashmi. Uh, so, do you have any questions? Um, moving on. Ma'am? Okay. Yes, Neha. Ma'am, I should share my screen. Uh, no, I'll I'll uh, play the video, Neha. Okay, ma'am. Okay. So uh, the next is uh, Ravel Mahima Ashok Kumar. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I will uh, present my screen. Yes, ma'am. Is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am. It is visible. Thank you. Greetings to all. First of all, I would like to thank the Association for the Clinical Neurology and the Mental Health and the MG School, MGM School of the Physiotherapy for selecting my research topic. Today, my topic for the paper, paper presentation is to study the relationship of the sleep quality and the functional disability in the patient with osteoarthritis of the knee and observational study. So first we start with the introduction. So as we all know that the osteoarthritis is one of the most prevalent joint and the musculoskeletal disorder occurring mostly in the knee joint and it has become one of the biggest health problems, especially considering the fact that this prevalence increases with the age. It is thought that the prevalence of the osteoarthritis has been significant because of the increase in the average age of the population and by the year 2020, the approximate number of the individual diagnosed with the osteoarthritis would increase by 57% and the limitation in the movement caused by the outbreak of the disease will increase by 66%. And there is a greater reduction in the proprioception in individuals suffering from the knee osteoarthritis so that there is increased the probability of the onset or advancement of the knee osteoarthritis and 
reduce the functional abilities of the patient. And the year lived with the disability rate due to knee osteoarthritis increased by 35% from 2005 to 2015. The multifaceted hyperalgesic nature of the osteoarthritic changes creates the potentially debilitating physical and psychological burdens, making individuals particularly susceptible to comorbid disorders that may exacerbate the OA associated symptoms. So, one of the most OA associated uh, symptoms is sleep disturbances. And the sleep disturbances is one of the uh, such comorbidity among the person with the knee OA up to 31% report significantly disturbance initiating sleep, 81% have difficulty maintaining nighttime sleep and up to 77% report any sleep problem. Although no study has evaluated sleep disturbances in older adults with the painful OA so that the need of the study is to check to evaluate the sleep disturbances with the functional disability in the patient with the OA. So methodology is study design is an observational study. Source of the data is OPD and the hospital-based patient. Study duration is one month. Sample size, I have taken 15, 50 patients. Inclusion criteria are subject willing to participate, age group which lies from the 40 to 65 years, both the males and females are included. A prior medical diagnosis of knee osteoarthritis by an orthopedician and physician. OME with a grade of 2 and 3 of Calgary and Lawrence classification. And I have taken unilateral OME patients. Exclusion criteria are fractured involving knee joint, bilateral OME, intraarticular steroid injection in the previous six months, OME with the grade 1 of Calgary and Lawrence classification. Material used are the consent form, pay bank paper, modified Western Ontario and McMaster University of the ONE questionnaire, which consists of the uh, three component, pain, stiffness, and the functional uh, disability of the patient, and the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index questionnaire, which uh, consists of the sleep duration and latency, habitual sleep efficiency, sleep disturbances, use of the sleep medication, daytime dysfunction, subjective sleep quality over the prior month. These are the components of the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index scale. So my, uh, the procedure is initial examination should be done, consent from the patient should be taken, 50 number of the patient is taken according to inclusion and the exclusion criteria, modified vomit and the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index questionnaire filled up by the patient and after that, the relationship of the sleep quality and the functional disability is checked by the SPSS version 20.0. So, the result is data was analyzed using the SPSS version 20.0. The data was normally distribution. So, Spearman draw test was used. So, uh, the sample size is 50. Next. The mean value of the modified VOMIC is 38.54. Standard deviation of the modified vomit is 13.135. Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index, the mean value of the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index is 5.28 and the standard deviation is 2.51. So, the data was not normally distributed. So, I have applied the experiment test. Mm. I have seen the weak correlation between the sleep quality and the functional disability in the patient with OA. Mm -hmm. So the R value mm -hmm. is, uh, is equal to no, 2.5, which is presentation. Yes, so that I uh, interpret it with correlation. So modified VOMAC, uh, the value of uh, correlation coefficient is 0 0.265, uh, and here, 0.265. So that the correlation between the VOMAC and the pitch per sleep quality index, uh, there is a big correlation. This is the chart 
of the weak correlation between the modified BOMIC and the Fitchburg Sleep Quality Index. The, uh, the chart suggests of this clutter diagram. Discussion. Very few studies have comprehensively evaluated the multidimensionality of the sleep quality and its independent contribution to functional disability among older adults with the painful OA. This study has documented a weak prevalence of the poor sleep quality and has shown that the self-reported functional disability are independently and significantly linked in this population. Using a published cut to point on the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index that has been used by the others, we found that the two-thirds of the older people living with the painful and the disabling knee osteoarthritis had poor sleep. Functional disability in performing activities of the daily living has been associated with various physiomedical conditions such as the body alignment, presence of the deformity and the pain, and in the osteoarthritic knee, pain and deformity are among the main contributing factors to the reduction of the functional ability. But this study similarly found a big relationship between the poor sleep and the measure by uh, which is measured by the global PSQL score and the functional disability, which is measured by the modified vomit in the OA of the knee. Conclusion of this study is this study shows the weak correlation of the sleep quality with the functional disability in the patient of the osteoarthritis of the knee. Limitations are this study has smaller sample size. Other pathological conditions are ex excluded. Future scope of the study is study can be carried out on the larger population. Financial support, no funding was taken from the study. Acknowledgement, I would like to thank all participants for being part of this study. These are my references and thank you for this. So do you have any questions? Okay, the uh, next participant is uh, Shruti B. Duration was for dryness, and the duration was for The outcome 
Sir, do you have any questions? No, madam. Next, uh, I will be presenting for Sharma Neha Narendra Bhai. My paper presentation title name Awareness of Text Neck Syndrome and Addiction to the Smartphone in the Physiotherapy Students of Ahmedabad, an Observational Study. Introduction In today's world, with the advancement in wireless technology, people spend enormous time on using handheld devices such as tablets and smartphones. The users now that they share information in use the internet, watch videos, use social media and gaming, and many other related activities, which result in a prolonged reflection with the forward bending, resulting in a text link. The person who showed the addictive behavior towards the mobile phone is called the smartphone addiction, known as nobophobia. The text neck syndrome is a major public health problem in a modern society used to describe a repetitive stress syndrome caused by the exaggerated forward positions such as mobile phones and laptops. Text neck syndrome may lead to many symptoms such as chronic headache, neck pain, tightness in the shoulder, nagging to severe pain, and muscle spasm in the upper back and changes in the spine. Text next may lead to early wear and tear of your spine and early spinal degeneration. As you repeatedly pull and swell this area, it may become inflamed over time and which can result in a muscle strain and pinch the nose, herniated disc, and abnormalities to your neck's natural curvature. Methodology of the study, study design and observation study shows of the total physiotherapy students of Ahmedabad. Study duration one month, sample size 85 subject, selection criteria. Inclusion criteria is between 18 to 20 years or 27 years and both male and female including non-specific neck pain, no history of the cervical injury. Exclusion criteria, history of the cervical spine trauma and any other neurological symptoms. Procedure, study conducted on 85 physiotherapy students and their age was between 18 to 27 years of, of age and uh, in a female 43 and male 42, the questionnaire contains first to social demographic information, second is a question to assess the awareness of text neck syndrome, third is a nomophobia questionnaire to assess the addiction of the smartphone. Nomophobia questionnaire is contain 20 questions and each question score on a seven point Tinker scale and ranging from one strong disagree to seven is a strongly agree. Nomophobia score are interpreted as follow: mild level 20 score, moderate level of nomophobia 60 to 100 score, and severe level of nomophobia 100 to 140 score. The results regarding the awareness of text neck syndrome: 64.7% have no awareness about the text neck syndrome and only 35.3% percent person are aware about the text neck syndrome. These are all are the content of text neck syndrome and overall awareness of text neck syndrome positive 52.9% and negative 47.1%. 
Logophobia questionnaire score. The grade of logophobia in male and female p value significantly 0.004 and frequency of logophobia score 10.58 percent have a mild level of logophobia 57.64 percent have a moderate level of logophobia 31.76 percent have a severe logophobia this question this study has demonstrated low level awareness of the students in our study we found that all students have a moderate level of grade of nomophobia is important to understand all biomechanics and physiological process of the body and the activity of interaction with the smartphone which already suggests a direct relationship as a predominant factor to the painful mechanism in a young student. It is increasingly more common to see individuals with their head down looking into the bright skin of smartphone and scheduled by the content in those devices. In recent decades, the advancing in digital technology have increased the use of smartphones for multiple regions and including the world entertainment and socialization. However, this technology is also associated with the evolution of the new medical syndrome due to the prolonged use of electronic device. Conclusion of the study, the development of the technology to increase the number of smart devices and increase the number of users of device have led to increase the number of patients of tech neck syndrome. Our study showed that there was good positive attitude and good addiction to body posture and impairment. Reduce the amount of time and spend using limitation. This was a self pressure if we studied to time limit, we could not increase the greater number of students in the study. Future score of this study required to assess the awareness of text neck syndrome and addiction level of the smartphone for them, and it can be carried out in the large population with the various age group. Financial support, no funding was taken for this study. And according to management, we would like to thank all participants for being part of this study. These all are my references. Thank you. So do we have any questions? No, madam. Uh, next, we have Madhav uh, Babubhai Katara. Is my screen visible? Yes. Okay. That is the uh, previous, uh, this thank you slide. Okay, previous slide, right? Uh. Is it visible now, sir? Yes, yes, madam, it is visible. Okay. Hello everyone, myself is Madhav Ben Katara, Master of Physiotherapy in Sports Science uh, at the Government Physiotherapy College, Ahmedabad. My paper presentation topic is Interatrial Reliability of Dynamic Leap and Balance Test in Normal Adult College Student in Observational Study. Introduction Motor performance balance is main component to stabilize our body, mainly two types of balance. One, Static balance and second, dynamic balance. Static balance is ability to maintain posture stability and orientation with center of mass or the base of support and body at the rest. The dynamic balance is ability to maintain posture stability and orientation with center of mass or the base of support while the body parts are in motion. There is a need for a new clinical assessment tool to test dynamic balance. We are using common method to test dynamic balance, bivalent test, star explosion test, if tests are using unchanged base of support, if tests are required body control in unchanged base of support. May not be any assessment tool to measure to change in base of support. The aim of the study is to find out the intra-rated reliability of dynamic leap and balance test for dynamic balance among normal adult college students. Objective of the study to find out the intra-rated reliability of time taken to dynamic leap and balance test among normal adult college students day one and day seven. Hypothesis. Null hypothesis, there is a no significant difference on time to complete the dynamic leap and balance test on day one and day seven. 
The alternate hypothesis there is a significant difference on the time to complete the tank with leap and balance test on day one and day seven. Methodology study design, observation study, study setting, college, sample population, college students, sample method, convenient sampling, the sample size, that is it. Inclusion criteria age between 80 to 25 years, players, they should be played two times a week. Both male and female are included, minimum level 5 on technical activity scale. Excellent criteria, measures of any traumatic or non-traumatic, orthopedic, neurological, and cardiovascular condition. The presence of any vestibular disorder, withdrawal criteria, individual willingness to continue, discontinue. Method, 32 college students have participated in this study. Time taken to the participant to complete the 20 leap task. Subject was leap peripheral to central target, alternating the uh, weight bearing from the one leg to another leg. Participant take to central target with the test link. Participant will be tested by same investigator on each of the two testing days. The testing session will be similar to both days, day one and day seven. Attainment of balance will be assessed using criteria similar to modify balance error policy system. This is the LPT. Short, short, long, posterior, posterior, medial, medial, anteromedial, and anterior. The left side and right side. A repeated measure to a mix and all was used to calculate the placards correlation coefficient to examine the test retest reliability of dynamic equipment and the test. Statical analysis for performed using SPSS for windows and ICC of 0 0.88 with 95 confidence interval from 0 0.98 to 0 0.99. We found the DLP for interact reliability ICC between 0 0.98 and high risk, highly significant reliability. This is the scatter plot diagram. Day one and day week. Day seven comparison time taken to complete the real conclusion. This study indicates the implemented reliability of dynamic leap and balance test is excellent for time cost efficient and easy to use. This suggests that clinical can use the, this instrument keywords dynamic leap and balance, clinical assessment tool, and reliability. This is reference. Thank you. So do you have any questions? No, madam. Okay, sir. Um, next, we have Govind Swami Sumedha. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Sumedha, can you share your uh, video? I... Also, is Dr. Khushali and Chanchala on the call? Dr. Khushali? Ma'am, I'm Khushali Kakkar. Uh, Dr. Kushali Patel. Chanchala Shiv Shankar. Yes, ma'am, I'm there. Uh, Chanchala, would you want to present your... Um, uh, yes, there is a technical glitch over here again. Uh, I'll take two minutes more. Can I please? Okay. Sumedha, are you ready with your uh, video? Ma'am, I have mailed you the video with the recording. All right, just give me a minute. You want me to mail again? No, that's fine. Dr. Kushali Patel. Ma'am, she is uh, not present. Okay. All right. Chanchala, uh, you can present when once you're ready. Uh, yeah, ma'am. Okay, no, uh, one minute more. Yeah.
Okay, I'm ready, ma'am. Uh -oh. Okay, we can start. May I know the name of the presenter now? Sir, it's Chanchala. Chanchala. Chanchala will be giving an oral presentation. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, Chanchala. Quickly. We are running out of time. So, ah, yes. Yeah. Am I, my screen is visible? Not yet, Chanchula. Oh, there is a problem in sharing my screen, ma'am. Can I give my presentation orally? Yes, you may. Sir, if that's okay. Yes, yes, madam. All right, go uh, ahead, Chanchula. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, good good evening, everyone. My my name is Sansala Musbele, and I am gonna present on the topic knee osteo knee osteoarthritis pathophysiology and physiotherapy management. The uh, Introduction, osteoarthritis is one of the most common form of arthritis. It is characterized by the degeneration of articular cartilage in which the breakdown leads, uh, leads to matrix fibrosis. Is this a review that you are presenting? Yes, ma uh, yes, sir. This is a review article. Uh, can I go ahead, okay. sir? Go, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, okay. thank you, sir. Uh, it is characterized by degeneration of articular cartilage in which the breakdown leads to matrix fibrillation. Uh, fissure appearance, gross ulceration, and full thickness loss of joint surfaces. The principal factors described are involved in two of the major tissues, that is, being cartilage and synovial membrane, implicated in the pathophysiology of the diseases. The growing body of evidence shows the exercise improvement knee joint function and decreased symptoms. Furthermore, the finding of Finding of the recent study suggests that the physical therapy interventions include exercise may reduce the need of ex, uh, energy, uh, sorry, knee osteoarthroplasty and intraarticular injections. Physiotherapy, which encroaches in, of number of modality, is a non invasive treatment option in the management of osteoarthritis. The pathophysiology. Uh, behind the osteoarthritis is the key pathological mechanism involved is uh, the namely pro-inflammatory and tumor necrotic factor. Inflammatory... Uh, like... Like... Uh, so... The key pathophysiology mechanism involves. Uh, am I clear now? Yes, you are. Oh, thank you. The key pathophysiological mechanism involves in osteoarthritis are susceptible mainly the pro-inflammatory and tumor necrotic factor. The sig signal signal path uh, pathway are well characterized effect of nuclear nuclear factors and mitogen activating proteins kinase sig uh, signaling response plus reprogramming are switch pathways the transcriptional network the inflammatory mediators mechanisms and oxidative stress comp comprises of the function and viability of chondrocytes Repro reprogramming the undergo hypotrophic differentiation and early sensations making the making that even more sensitive to affect the pro-inflammatory and pro 
catabolic mediators. The physio uh, physiological inhibitions inhibitors are capable of directly directly contracting the binding of cytokines of uh, to the cell or reducing the pro inflammatory level have been identified in had been identified in this tissues they they can they could be divided into three categories based on the mode of action the first category category is re recept analogous which interfere with the binding of the ligands and the receptors by compound uh, compounding the same binding site the second category includes double form of pro inflammatory cytokinase receptors which binds to the free cytokinase these are tumor uh, trontic form of receptors the uh, physiotherapy management includes non is invisible treatment options short term benefit which give short term benefits to the exercise and uh, pain and functions the attention is attention is to improve the adhesion to the exercise by exercising knee taping uh, is used to reduce the pain knee braces of in knee osteoarthritis knee, pain, knee braces are also given in knee osteoarthritis patients and lateral wedges shoes and modified shoes designing to reduce the knee load conclusion despite being one of the most studied and uh, more prevalent conditions of our population knee osteoarthritis still does not have any clear pathophysiology or any sign most efficient in intervention to treat the symptoms and degeneration associated exercise is early stages can valuable uh, valuable therapy for the for this patient and it is recommended by all the medical societies other non surgical treatments have variable effect at the at their success will be depending on the multi uh, variability and their use has to be select judiciary according to the specific clinical situations physiotherapy management for osteoarthritis consists of various varieties of interventions which wish list there is strong evidence for the therapeutic benefit of exercises there are fewer high quality studies demonstrating the benefits of other modality giving the growing number of people affected by osteoarthritis and the limited availability of healthcare resources there is a strong argument to suggest the part Uh, practitioners for or focus on the educating paper, people about the benefit of exercises and facility continuing exercises participation in the people with osteoarthritis thank you thank you chanchala uh, so the last um, candidate for today is uh, govinda swami sumedha yes sir you giving an oral presentation sumeda yes ma'am yes go ahead ma'am is my ppt visible yes it's visible Good evening, everyone. My name is Sumedha Govinda Swami. I'm doing my MPT in orthopedics in Kelly University of Physiotherapy. Title of my study is Efficacy of uh, Eccentric Training in Adjunct to Low Level Laser Therapy for Lateral Epicondylitis, a pilot study. Based on research till date, the therapeutic exercise program. Uh, based on the research till date, the therapeutic exercise program to treat painful tendinopathy should consist of eccentric exercises that focuses. is on the affected area and eccentric training has been showing promising results in management of lateral epicondylitis but the there was no such uh, certain type of protocol which consists of more exercises and also explains the progression of load and repetitions it is not been studied yet in the low level laser therapy along with plyometric exercises and conventional physiotherapy have showed false positive effect on the lateral epicondylitis however research is lacking where uh, low level laser therapy is given along the eccentric training 
aim of the study is to evaluate the effect of eccentric training in lateral epicondylitis in terms of functional activity, pain pressure threshold, grip strength, and pain strength. Hypothesis. Eccentric training with low-level laser therapy will be effective in improving grip strength, pain strength, functional activity, and in decreasing pain. Material and method. Source of data is from Tertiary Healthcare Hospital, Belga. Method of collection of data is study design experimental, study type single group pre-post design. Target population is individuals who are diagnosed with uh, lateral epicondylitis within the age group of 18 to 60 years. Duration of data collection is three months. Sample size is five. Materials are informed consent forms, data collection sheets, pen and paper, TheraBand, which is yellow and green color, uh, half kg, one kg to two kg dumbbells, and flexible rubber bar. Inclusion criteria. Participants who are clinically diagnosed with lateral epicondylitis aged between 18 to 60, individuals with positive cause and test, uh, participants having minimum score of three on VAS scale and subjects who are willing to participate have been recruited into the study. Exclusion criteria is any injury around the shoulder, elbow, wrist on the affected side, primary carcinoma, cervical radiculopathy, uh, participants who took uh, local steroid injections in the past six months, participants who are presently on medication for lateral epicondylitis, history of fracture, radius, ulna, humerus with resultant deformity, of the affected extremity, pregnancy, and epileptic patients have been excluded. And the outcome measures taken are patient-rated tennis elbow evaluation questionnaire, which has a pain and function subscales, pain pressure algometer to see pain pressure threshold, grip strength to assess Jamar hand dynamometer, pinch strength to assess Jamar uh, pinch strength, Jamar pinch gauze to assess pinch strength. Patient-rated tennis elbow questionnaire. Uh, this is a 15-item questionnaire. Uh, this is this is designed to measure the forearm pain and disability in patients with lateral epicondylitis. This uh, questionnaire has uh, two subscales. One is pain and one is function. In pain subscale, it has five items. In function subscale, specific activities like household activities, any particular activities will come into this. And usual activities such as work and uh, uh, sports activities will come into this uh, category. Next, pain pressure algometer. This is used to uh, evaluate the amount of pain the person must, uh, can perceive. This, uh, this has been calculated in kg, so the constant amount of pressure will be given on the lateral epicondyle till that stimulus becomes painful. Jamar, uh, Jamar dynamometer has been taken to assess grip strength. Here, the patient will be seated with the uh, forearm, with the forearm in neutral shoulder in uh, flexion in the wrist. Uh, the they will hold the Jama dynamometer and they have to squeeze the handle. Uh, and the uh, amount of amount of force that they can uh, put in will be measured in kgs. And the next one is pinch gauze. Here, two pinches have been taken. One is a key pinch, and the second one is tripoid pinch. In key pinch, only the thumb and the index finger will be used. And in a, a tripoid pinch, a middle finger, index finger, and thumb will be used. And again, this, this strength is measured in kgs. Procedure. Ethical clearance have been obtained from the Institutional Ethical Committee. Subjects who have met the inclusion and exclusion criteria have been taken for the study. A written con informed consent have been obtained from all the subjects. Required assessment of every subject has been done. Uh, patient rated tennis elbow evaluation questionnaire, uh, pain pressure algometer, grip strength using uh, hand dynamometer, and Hello, Sumedha. You're not audible. Yes, Sumedha, you're not audible. The 18th, which is post treatment session. And so, isn't it training? Sumedha, are you still there? Yes, ma'am. Uh, when where did it cut off? Uh, the procedure slide. 
Yes, ma'am. So, mother, if you are uh, using Wi-Fi. Yes, sir. Please try to support uh, it with your uh, I... mobile phone. Yes, sir. Yes, go ahead, please. Ma'am? Yes, Sumitha. Um, Sumitha, your audio is getting cut. I think you should give up Wi-Fi for a while and then be on mobile phone data. Can I continue now? I can't yes, hear. Make it fast. Yes, sir. So this is this is the protocol for my eccentric training. First one is using flexible rubber bar, which is tight. The second one is using TheraBand eccentric supination. And the next is caption. And then using dumbbell uh, eccentric wrist flexion and extension. Uh, also forearm pronation and supination. So these are the, uh, so the next slide here, the weekly progression has been given for the repetitions and for the number of seconds in, uh, seconds of hold and for the progression of load. For Taylor, Taylor's twist, we have to start with five number of repetitions and gradually progress into 15. And the holding seconds can be progressed from three seconds to 10 seconds. And whereas for eccentric supination, same, it goes from 15 to the 10 to 15 set of repetitions and the second of hold will go from 3 to 10 and you can progress the load by using yellow yellow theraband at the beginning green at the uh, second week and red theraband at the third week at end of, for wrist flexion extension and forearm pronation supination same number of repetitions from 5 to 15 uh, and, the, and the load can be progressed by using half kg dumbbell in the first week 1 kg dumbbell in the second week and second in the third week and the results are uh, Mean age is 49 and the height is 163 centimeters, weight is 69 and this is 24. In the demographic data here, most of the 80% of the people affected are male and all the people who have uh, came with the tennis elbow are having right-handed, right-handed, uh, uh, right-handed was affected. And uh, no, only four people have right-handed affected and one was having left one. And no, none of them had any neck pain or shoulder pain. None of them have taken any local steroid injections and all of their cousins test was positive. Uh, and pre-post score paired uh, sample t-test. Here you can see all, all the variables have been, con have been uh, significant. The p-value is considered significant if it is a uh, 5% which is uh, 0 0.013 less than 0 0.05. Here, all the pain pressure algometer, tripod pinch, and all the uh, subscales in questionnaire have been uh, uh, considered significant here. And here for grip and uh, grip strength and key pinch, it's been taken as Wilcoxon test because they have they both have haven't came under normal distribution. So here also they both have been considered as uh, significant. Their significant level is 0 0.043 less than 0 0.05 discussion there is there was a uh, randomized control trial conducted by taylor et al to, to assess the efficacy of a eccentric wrist extensor exercises using flexible rubber bar as a treatment of tendinopathy um, so in comparison to the control th in control therapy that included stretching cross friction massage ultrasound heat and ice they have added this eccentric exercise using flexible rubber bar which resulted in the superior results for the reduction in pain increasing in strength and the subjective disability and then other study they have compared the they have compared the eccentric versus concentric exercises 
on pain, grip strength, and function in later epicondylitis, and concluded that eccentric exercises and concentric exercises both are effective, but eccentric exercise is more effective in pain, grip strength, and function in later epicondylitis. And the and the next study was done by. Leela et al. comparing that evaluation of the effect of high power and low power laser therapy on pain, tenderness, grip force of the patient with tennis elbow and stated that both low power and high power laser therapy along with common physiotherapy treatment were effective in reduction of pain and tenderness and increasing in the grip force of the patient with tennis elbow and uh, they did not show any significant difference. The conclusion is the current study have shown a great promise for the rehabilitation of Later epicondylitis using eccentric protocol to restore function, decreasing in pain, increase grip strength, pain strength, and improve performances in daily activity. These are my references. Thank you. Thank you, Sumeda. And we come to the yes. end of the session. Sir, would you like to say a few words? No, no. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. All right. Then uh, thank you so much for uh, participating today and hope to see you tomorrow uh, for the second day of the conference at the same time at 9 a.m. tomorrow, that is 27 February 2022. Thank you, everybody. Good evening. Have a great day.